Does everybody have a school address, though, an email address? You have that yet? Okay. Um, so I'm going to have to wait until that's really set up. And it, it should come soon. I know it's very hard to try to do that. But unless I'm told differently, I'll be sure the first initial last name is Archway, Tribune, Archway, and Archway. And give that to you. Yes? Is the score really for um, our benefits so that we know where we are? And then I hope so. as you kind of, like, if there's like a major problem, you maybe would spend extra time with us when you come back into the school. That's yeah, the way it will work, I mean, the score is for you. I mean, but um, your headmaster will see it, but I've also graded his notebook. So he knows I'm really picky. So it's, you know, it's hard to get, well, you can't get, I mean, it's very difficult to get, very difficult, 50 points, perfect score. But he knows that. So if, I'm hoping that you will take that and, and use it to say, we need to fix this. I need to pay attention here. And, and there's been so much information just plowing at you like a fire hose. I, we all realize that. Um, but now you have a couple of weeks to kind of start processing and go back to what you say about that. Reread your book or read it in the first place if you haven't. But uh, when I'm in your classroom, the way I'm expecting, the way I've worked it in the past, I would, if you're RK, you would be. I would see probably nine classrooms in one day on, on a Monday, just observing. And at, it's probably going to be maybe a 40-minute period, 35-minute uh, period, depends on how your schedule is set up. And I would take, I would ask you to come with me and out of the classroom so your leader, your A, whichever one, you know, will uh, take over and I'll just quickly go through some things that I would like to see you and that's not always the case. Sometimes it's like, wow, I really like what you did there. I'm going to use that in the rest. So it's not, it's not in there in judgment of going, okay, that is this. I'm hoping you will uh, realize I'm trying to coach you to get the best that you can do. Uh, but I, I'll do that immediately, one on one. I'm not going to send you a report um, what I saw that day. I want you to have that immediate feedback. Okay? And you can ask me questions, of course, then, but we, you know, we can't be away from your class too long and I'm on the schedule to be in your name, so you can work in another two minutes. But um, that's the way that will work. Uh, so that if I only see nine classrooms at our take, for instance, um, the next week I'll see the other nine, and we'll just keep floating that way. One of the most beneficial times, well, that I hope will be beneficial, but um, that Friday time when I will, I will see, I, I'm not trying to ignore trivia, I'll talk to you in a second, <laughs> and Ferris House, but that um, every other week on Friday, I will be in, according to whatever schedule your headmaster's make up, um, and that's going to be a great look. That will be all first grade meets together, not all six of you, the three of you, so you know, it's not like we're going to let the kids run wild. We're, uh, 45 minutes, but it'll be a long period because I'll have six grade levels to work with that day, that I work with that day. So but it'll be one after another, you'll have a block of time that you'll actually come in and um, we can go through the next two weeks' works, because I'll see you for two weeks. So I can point out any pitfalls. The problem, the, the thing when you're going through these books or you're writing these words, you know how to spell these words, so that's easy, you know, do that. Well, I probably need to work this bell so many times that uh, when, who can you take? <laughs> I know she's here only a little bit amount of time, so if you haven't done your OPR, then um, <coughs> please go with her. Okay. One person, who has done Who has not done their oral phonogram review with Quinn? Go ahead and raise your hand. Has everybody done it? I thought we didn't get through them all. Oh. Well, Jared, he's yeah, going to be next back. Week. Has everybody done it? Everybody's been with Quinn and, and done the OPR? Woohoo! Success. I, I recognize that. She recognized her back. Great. Right. <laughs> there were some blanks, but I have to help you out because there's a blank. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Quinn. Yeah. Am I going to see you next week? Um, yeah. Go ahead and. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. okay. 
Thanks so much. Uh, okay. The grade level meetings. Um, uh, those we as three people, where there is an aide or, a, or a, a, a lead, preferably the one who's actually going to be doing the work, but it doesn't have to be if they're occupied. But we'll actually go through those words because um, what I started to say is many times I I'm, I'm pretty sure there about this word coming up is going to get more problems than the next one. Maybe it won't give the teacher more problems, but it'll give the children more problems. There may be something I can add to it to say if I were doing this, this is what I would do. Okay? Alright. So trivium, veritas, same thing. I'll probably not what we'll probably do in the beginning is I'll just be in your classroom observing and, and talk to you afterwards. Um, and then if uh, you decide, well, I, I really like those grade level meetings. Let's just talk to first graders. Let's just talk to kindergarten. We can do that too. Okay. It's just we'll probably I'll probably start off with the observations. And those observations in the beginning, I won't come. Uh, at least my intention. I've gone through this with all the masters, but I wouldn't expect to be there before you're two weeks in school. I'm not going to show up that first week when you're taking your kindergartens just around the halls and teaching how to walk in the halls, you know. Um, there's a lot of classroom management you're going to be doing. But, that, but I will be there after about that second week. And in, the, in that, certainly the first time, I'll try to keep it my mouth shut, say nothing, I'll just sit there right there. So, but after that, um, unless it totally intimidates you, it totally throws you off track, I may be there helping coach as you're teaching, or I may model what you know, you could do for this one. If you start on one, one, one words, for instance, um, in a school I was in last year, all the uh, second grade teachers came in while I was teaching the one, one, one words the first time, so that you have an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so that's, it's just for me to continue what we're doing now, only at a more relaxed pace. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any questions about that? All right. Does anybody have, but did, did everybody get a copy of their grade level of where to start uh, year one? Is there, is, did anyone miss that? Okay. <coughs> I hope that that will be helpful to you. I, I think the, the most um, application is going to be that first week, and if you have something, you know, just a little piece of paper to guide you to where you're going to be, I'm hoping that's going to be helpful. Um, you, I also, and the grade two, program. the year two printed, so you can see what the difference is. Just hold on to it, and we'll be talking about it again next April. You know, but for now, focus on what's happening in year one. For K um, one and two, year one, and you're just going to keep flowing. You're just going to be following the manual and um, um, well. You're going to be following writing or reading as far as you know. Year two, or grade two, you're going to be jumping um, to another section that is not in your manual. The manual right now, your manual for grade two starts with process and okay? That's why I'm guiding you back to this is what you're going to do through A through H all the way. You're going to do every word this year. Next year, you won't be starting at A to A all the way through H K. You're going to start at K, okay, just like your teacher's guide says. Does that make sense? And that's why the three through five, same thing. You're going to start A to H. Remember, that's not in your manual. And then that I'll help you get to the section you're supposed to be in, and I'll go over it with you. And I'm on campus. Yes. Do the notebooks follow the students each year, or do they start in one? No, the notebook, the, the child makes a new notebook every year. Okay, and they have to get a new notebook every year. Um, but I hope they keep it so they can see, wow, I'm doing so much better than I used to be. Yes. yes. Is there a system in place for students who haven't had the background, uh, you know, they're coming to school for the first time in second grade and they haven't had any fun friends? Are you talking about next year? Yeah, or this all. year? Because this year, well, everybody. She's, she's very talks. Yeah. Oh, you're a Veritas? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, 
Yeah, I was there. But uh, you have, but you have another resource person this year who's very good. And if you, uh, and those people, if you do have a resource person, if, you, if um, whether it's a separate person, it's your aide, or it's you as the lead, you're going to have to spend extra time with them next year. This year, you're all in the same boat. You look like you're going to have children come in and say, "I know all this. I've had Spalding for two years." Okay, be careful. Maybe you do it, maybe you don't. Okay? So we're going to do the same work that everybody else does. That we get. Okay? Um, but yet you have. The Veritas, you can start pointing out, you, you'll know by certainly October, oh, this, or if it's a brand new student, they're going to be, um, if they were a fourth grader, you're telling you're a second grader. But if a fourth grader comes in new to Veritas, well, he's, working with children who've been doing this for three years. So he definitely needs extra help with phonograms and, and understanding the marking system because the, the teacher's going to review it, okay, but it's not going to be as intense as you'll be doing this year. And so, okay. anybody else? Yeah, the thing that was the thought I had, the trivia, our first and second graders we're going to be doing some undoing because of grades. Yeah. But the everybody, yes. Every, I had to undo some of your ideas. Yeah, just this way. Well, we're all older dogs in there. They're more mellow. But no, that's true. And you know, instead of adding off, off it's adding off. Oh, look, look at the gift I gave you here. Bring over so many sounds. Okay. But that, yes, because they did it so intensely in kindergarten. It's just, you have a treat for you. Now you have three sounds. Okay. Um, you can sell it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, it, they, even though they know grace, that they're in a good spot because it's so similar. It just has a little bit of a little difference. Yeah, it's not a huge upbeat. Okay. Um, anybody else? Yes. So year, year two will be followed for the rest of the time, aside from this year. Right. After this year, we'll yeah. stick. Year two is basically lined up with your teacher's guide. If you keep your nose in your teacher's guide and you're writing road to reading and follow what your list is, you're going to be okay. My, the only reason that I did that was you have it on one page instead of in a big picture. So it's not so daunting. And mainly, the reason I mainly did it was for um, Particular, particularly the older classrooms, because it's hard to figure out, well, when am I supposed to do this page? When do I do that page? Because it's, it, you're hitting the words at a different time. Okay? So it's just a, a guide to, to get you there. Um, it's not the end of the world if you miss doing page three or four, you're sitting, you can do it at another time. I'm just saying it works really well if you do it before you're teaching. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, you had a question for me earlier. What was that? Um, I wanted to know exactly what marks we need to do on the test today. Okay. Writing individual letters, sounds, and words. Right. When you're um, okay. When you're writing, the only time you're going to use those slash marks to communicate with me. Um, is if you're indicating the front there. If you're indicating, if you do this, I think photograph sounds. Okay. Um, if you do this, you might be talking about sound. Just so that I can tell really, is that what you mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was yeah. It, yeah. So you'll be able to. Yeah. No, no, I'll get it. Yeah. Like, like, for, like, for example, like, writing about the little like, changing the line to the line. Yeah, I sure that you don't show you changing the sound and changing the letter. Yeah, I'm changing um, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who are still making that plan you're watching stuff. I'm going to be changing the Y to I. Okay. Got it. All right. Because now I'm talking about the letters. Okay. okay. And I don't say I changed the get I to the get I too much. Okay. 
Uh, and keep in mind too, I'm telling you ways to um, teach some of these, um, some of this theory in a way that I try to develop into the most concise way I can to get the point across. If you say different words and you're still getting the point across, it's not like horrible. You're still getting the point across. I'm just trying to give you some help to get there more concisely. That's all. Okay. If you have all, if you've taught Spalding for three years, or uh, and you have a way that you feel like I'm really comfortable with this, I've really been successful with this, I'm not going to say no. Nope, you're you're going to have to get rid of that. No, I, I, that's not my intention. I'm trying to give you a way that might tweak it to make it better. Okay, is everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, and then Sam, you had a question. What was yours earlier? Yeah, I'm just going to ask you if the main, what the main difference was between uh, delayed and immediate. Delayed and, and immediate. Is everybody clear with that? If you are not, it's in your teacher's guide. Actually, in delivering, get familiar. You have two weeks before school starts. To get more familiar with your teacher's guide. We're going to talk about the teacher's guide today. But it's all right, it's spelled out, total script. Procedures for written phonogram review, step one, immediate feedback, delayed feedback. And then step two, immediate delay. Okay, so if that's the, that, that's on page uh, 20, in that I'm looking at the third grade. They're, they're not totally consistent. But um, they've done a, a nice job of actually telling you step by step, this is what you're going to do. Okay, so if you get the kids in the way of that, you do have a resource in your desk, okay? And then if that's done clear to you when you read that resource, I'm, I'm your resource also. Because considering this delay feedback, um, I've marked out a couple of things about uh, the teacher will show, it says show the card immediately after the students have written. I would prefer that you write the photograph immediately after the uh, students have written so that you can Again, I'm starting at 2 on the clock. Is that what you did? Or, you know, whatever. So that it's not just a hold up a card. It's a chance to reinforce some of those skills that you taught them maybe two months ago that you've noticed the papers you're getting on. I see people who are making big slashes on their T's as I'm doing it. Did, you know, is this what you did? Do you have a time to cross? That kind of thing. So it's your chance to reinforce without going back. All right, we're going to have a whole, we're starting all over with your hand right today. Okay. Um, anybody else? Okay. One of the first things that you would do, um, well, let me get the, let me get through this first though. Does everybody remember seeing this piece of paper? Okay, that is even a more condensed form of what those grade level teacher things did. So if you're it said in, in black, it shows where you'll be in year one approximately in that month. So if you're a um, fourth, fifth grade teacher, probably by the end of September, you're going to be through all of section A to H. You again remember third, fourth, fifth. You're going to put in as many as possible, but stay with your sections. Don't. Don't one of you do, you know, I did 60 words this week and somebody else did 15. You're going to have to well, let's put as many as possible. You could certainly, if you only put in 10 a day, you're not going to get there. You've got to put in more, but you're not going to be grading them either. You're not going to be giving tests on me do that and go, except for little quizzes. So you get the ideas of how I, I'm uh, what we're talking about marking. But um, you do want to enter the, the participation so that everybody is on, online with knowing what they're then, for instance, um, third grade jumps up to section K. I, on this original one, let's, if you're in third grade, um, I think the original one I had that you would start in section L. I think probably this first year it's okay to go back to that section K. But you did section K for me. It wasn't all that easy, right? Especially the look through, all that business. So if you start back there, that's a, probably a better place for them. That's the only thing I can change on, on this, and it's only for the third grade. Andrea. 
provide you with those in session R. So I'll help you with those words because we haven't done them together. Even and you've done it by yourself, you know, but um, so I'll, I'll help guide you through some of those. Because as I'm looking at those sections, I'm going, oh, I really need to talk to you about that. I really need to, you know, look at that. And we consider this when you teach that one. Um, which, by the way, reminds me, when I looked at your blue notebooks last night, I did not grade every page. I looked at page one and I looked at section A. Okay? Um, I might have flipped through if there was something glaring, and I, I made a comment about that. But basically, that score is based on where you were on page one and section K. If there were handwriting problems on page one and section K, that's what you got grade. That's what you grade page one. However, I also know that some of you improved as you went along. Some of you deteriorated, some of you were so tired and rebound, and you learned to get some words in here. But fix it. Go back and actually, if you have time now to you know, make it something that you can be proud of and you can actually use. If you look in your book and you have check marks all over your book because you didn't mark the words correctly, or you didn't write the syllables, you didn't write the rules, don't go, oh well, that was a pretty and <laughs> picky, uh, whatever word you want to use, woman. And, <laughs> and I really should just go back and reconsider what I did on that page. Okay, so you're actually going through the day and focusing more. Some of you know that when you went through that work, you just wrote a bunch of words and then you went back and tried to make them fit the rules we're talking about. You did not process the way you were expecting your children to, and you will not learn it that way. You need to be, if, you, if that's what you've done, you actually need to do those again so you're thinking whatever word, or, you know, if you're, so you're thinking easy, and you're thinking, my base word is easy, my name is yeah, right, easy, not easy, make your brain go through that. Syllables are next, the said, the underlined to, if, Okay, that I can't write below 11, but you know, go through the whole thing that you're going to ask them to do. Not write the word and I'll go back in my book and see what I'm going to change. Okay, most of you did do that and you know it better than those who did not. But I can tell by those who didn't. Okay, all right. Um, and again, okay, on this, on this um, sheet that I've given you, there are places on it where it says master. If you, let's open your writing road to reading. Or you can use the teacher's guide, but I think you all have the writing road to reading. The same thing is repeated in the teacher's guide. Go to page um, 420. 420. We're going to talk about master in here. On that page, Also gives you a guide. Uh, gives you a guide here. If you at the bottom of this page, this is where we're talking about spelling. But it all it tells you what you do. It's you know, language arts and reading, but our focus is on doing stuff and um, writing words. But if on, on that page you can see your grade level as point the way the system will work. So as we go through it each year, the, we are hoping that by the end of grade one, um, those first graders can pretty well spell everything through section J without a lot of trouble. There will be some of them who won't. Okay, those are the ones that you're going to help with. You're going to help more, and you're going to see that on an assessment test that I'll talk about in a second. The second graders, we hope will have mastered everything through section N. Now, second graders won't be able to do that this year because you may not get that far. Okay, so you really know they're master. But the, the way this is set up, if you look at it, whatever you did in second grade, that's where third grade will start the next year. It won't be that you presented these words once, they studied them this week, we're done with those forever. No, it's that they're going to hit it again the following year. And where you end up, and you're going to hit it again so that even though it's been introduced, um, they do have a chance of uh, better retention because they're going to start with that again the next year. Now the nice thing about that, they start up again, and they think, well, this is 
Yeah, I just did those ones last year. Not so easy. They'll still miss some of them, but at least they have a chance to go through it again. So that there really will be mastery approximately January in each one of your grade levels of where you're supposed to be. After that point, if you start introducing new words, you're going to feel the ship shaking because they're, they're new words. And they're, they're, you're not going to tell them they're new. You're not going to say, well, we're just going to spring you. You're going to keep on going, and you're, but you may find, according to your, the makeup of your class, that if you're in a fourth grade and they're not retaining them, they're just remembering for the test, and then they don't know any, you know, the writing sentences with them two weeks later and they don't remember them, you probably need to be doing a heavier review. Okay? It's more important for them to have uh, really learned what you're teaching as you go than, oh gee, we're in grade five and we got session Y. So we can help if you, they don't know what's in session R. Okay? It's make sure they keep that constant review so that and keep your finger on it to know um, what they remember. One way to keep your finger on it is called the uh, assessment test. I refer to it as the Morse McCall. I see that Spalding Spalding Foundation has changed the name. But I want you to go to a teacher's guide, and if you don't have your own, then just look on with some else to go around talking about. And you can go back to the uh,
stop them, you know. They're already hot. They didn't try anymore. But you give them a good break, and, and about September, um, like I say, that's when they're aggressive. That's why I gave you that little sheet. And I think it talks about this because on there, I'm not sure. Um, but first grade, I think it's okay to test them right away, just to, for you to have a feel. And, but make sure, whether it's first grade or fifth grade, this is not a test like a normal test. This is because I haven't taught you this. I'm not trying to see if you remember what I told you. This is just for me to know where you are so that we can see the progress through the year. It's just, it's, I'm only going to look at the words that are right. I'm not going to give you a grade on it. It's not going to be something that goes home to your mom. It's just something for me to be able to work with uh, your progress. All right? Um, there's another point in this, in this assessment. And again, there, there are specific directions of how to do this test, but it's very basic. You say run, the boy can run, run, right, run. If the kindergartners can write just a letter, okay, that's good. Okay, if they don't do anything, that's okay. If somebody is, you know, really, I mean, again, you're not going to do the very first day. But um, there will be some of those children who can do it. You will not give a 50-word test over here, okay? But you, the first grade class uh, may give 30 words, even initially, because you have some who can do it. And the point of the test, remember, is to see how many they can get right. So it shouldn't be a uh, issue to uh, have the there's somebody who can spell 35 words, which would be very unusual. But if you go through 30, some of the, the higher learners that came in that way uh, are already able to score the 25. But if you have another child who's sitting over there and really can't write letters even, it's OK. You can sit out here. Just listen to us this time. You know, by next month, you're going to be Right, right along with us. They don't push it, but he's got to try to write, you know, 30 words. Okay? And, and if they don't know, they just they don't have any idea what to do for Kinder. Do you have them like draw a line so that you kind of stay in the right place? Yeah, that would be that that's the best way to do it, yes. Okay. And there is a particular form in your book. Let's look at that when we're talking about it. That will make your life easier when you're grading these.
Just sit here with us and we'll be through this very quickly. Okay? All right. Yes. I mean, I know we didn't do that, but she doesn't do that. I don't. Help them stay along. No, because that's what we're talking about is uh, marking. Okay. Maybe in the, in the later grades, I think that you might say, okay, I'm on number 30, or you might number every other line. The problem, the thing that happened, the thing that I've seen happen more than once, several times, the teacher will say, 20. Uh, the boy can run. And they write 20, uh, 15, you know, bring me the apple, whatever the sentence is. And they write 15, okay? So next one, we just did this one, keep going. Now you might say, certainly, I'm at, uh, at the bottom of the page, go to the next column so that it's easier for you to grade and know where you are, okay? If you do number, it's not horrible. You can also be checking, are they forming their numbers correctly that way. It's okay for them to number, but it's not, it takes extra time to do it too, but um, it's not necessary, especially in the early grades, to write a number all the way down. If they're you, and again, upper grades, you, you can just use a regular piece of notebook paper. It's not that it has to be this form. It's just an easier way for you to do it. Um, <coughs> Fifth grade, what does your form look like? Because I don't like this one for third grade. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Fourth grade's form, you can see, looks like this. It's all on one page. It's a lot easier to grade than this one. It's going to be, um, you know, flip it over. So you might go to a fourth grade on the website or borrow your uh, fourth grade um, page. I think this one is going to be easier for you to use. And third grade, they should be able to write in that much space. That's what they're writing on every day. Okay? Second graders, you have the wide world paper, just like you do um, that you're teaching from. Fourth graders don't use the second grade paper. They don't have a big, you know, four pages or something. And they want to do it. All right. <clears throat> When you give, after you've given this test in, look at, page approximately 43. The thing that's nice about this particular page is that you're at the beginning of the school year, you have no idea what these children know, who are the ones that are going to need more attention, who are the ones who don't need much attention. It looks like this is called Class Instructional Level Tally Sheet. And they have the exact right thing that works in their books, or three, in the assessment area. Where they find it? Okay. So when I get a, a test, and I'm going through and saying, okay, this is, these are, after I've graded everything, <coughs> then I, I would go back and say, okay, this person missed, for instance, the, in fifth grade, the first, this person missed reason, nearly, just tally, just a little, do a little tally marks. So that, and then the, and you look at the next test, and this person missed these, you know, so you can tally. So that at the end of that, you have a clear, um, picture of, of these kids, I had more people miss in section O than they did in section I. If you have fifth graders and most of the class is missing in section I, it's a problem, okay? Because you want to start them off. Okay, so you've got a lot of them to do. I, I can't imagine that's going to happen, but I don't know the makeup of your classrooms. Um, but it gives you an idea, even though uh, when you do that, this is not the only thing you're going to do to measure where you are. I would still suggest that in this first year, you start where I ask you to. Even if you have uh, lots of people back here in O, you might want to go back and, and review some of those, or it's not a review, but you might want to teach some of those words from that section before you start O. Or, you know, so that if you're, if they're way behind where you want to start, then push it back. Don't start in art. Push, you know, go to um, wherever they're making the most mistakes are as a fifth grader. 
And uh, it looks pretty good. They didn't miss very many in R or S. The most they are missing is section U. First year school, do not start in U, just because that's what this test looks like. So in other words, uh, err on the side of conservatism, go back to something that's easier for them to start. Don't take them, well, these kids are really great. I'm not going to start in section S. I'm going to start in section T. You're going to pay for it. Okay? Just if the minimum of where you would start is where I'd ask you to. You need to go further back than that. It's okay, especially this first year. You may have, we don't know where your kids can go. They may, you may have a, a group that really needs um, we'll review later. And, and especially in these first the first year or two, that's not as big a concern as they get that that old information, even if you can't complete where they're supposed to be for mastery. We want to get them up to that and you can't do it by starting at a more difficult session. Makes sense right? Okay, yeah. Um, it, it seems to me there's there's a disadvantage to calling it a test to the kids. Would produce well, don't call it a test. That's why I said I'm trying to find out where you are for checking the, you know, the, the, uh, the words that you know that are right and you're going to assess that and, and watch your progress. It's not a test because it's not things that are given to you. Okay, anybody else? Yes. There's a weekly list of words. Is that a spelling test? Or that's yes. It? Okay. Well, that's a test. Because on, okay, let's talk. Let's, let me finish this first. All right. You, um, hold that thought. Um, let me finish this. Okay. I have a question. Did, on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. So, um, for the tallies, mm -hmm. um, could you just really quickly, I didn't, I wasn't quite following exactly how to mark that. Okay. I have a test in front of me, a fifth grade student. And this particular child, on his test, these words are on the test number one. Okay, so it goes right along with test number one, okay. or assessment number one. Okay, okay. Um, that child, the first word he missed was done. Then he missed perfect. Then he missed nearly. And then he missed everything after that. So I would put a tally on every one of those words that he missed. So this, uh, is, this is for you. This is for the teacher. He doesn't get that. Okay, okay. so I, I look at, let me finish my thought. Then I go to the next test. That person didn't miss anything except the last three. Okay, so you go through 30 class, 30 tests. You may, you'll probably have 25 that missed the ones at the bottom, but you'll only have four maybe that missed the ones in uh, section K. It's for you to see where your own little group of 30 is. So this is for the entire class. So if I have a so everybody in my class missed celebration. Right. I'm gonna have 28 marks. Yes. In section T for celebration. Right. Okay. Now I would only do that for everybody all the way through to the test. The first, the first uh, on on uh, list one. Okay. Keep in mind you have eight lists here. List one is to give you a feel as a teacher with a brand new group class looks like, what their needs are. It's not really to do much more than that. Now, by the time you get to the next test list, <laughs> um, list two, I would suggest you're going to be, you're going to be starting in approximately mid-August, right? Okay, it took her 45 minutes to take this test. Actually, you started a little longer. It took about an hour. I'll make sure we're started at 1 o'clock and you can, you'll have that time. Okay? Sure, we took the test because she's ready. But uh, the rest of you have some more. Um, so, let's when you teach or when you assess with list one, that's going to be as close to the beginning of school as possible. So, it's because it's like, okay, you're a blank slate, I don't want you to know, right? Okay. After that, you're going to, the next time you teach a list, or you assess with a list, is going to be list two. I would not, and we want you to do it the first um, 
day possible at the beginning of the month. So it's always the same place in the month. So that you really have some kind of assessment to go on. However, I want you to do it in September. You haven't had time to teach them much. You've already done all this assessing that you can. Wait until the first week in October, I would suggest, so that you now, okay, I've taught you for six weeks. Let's see if the, the scores have changed. Okay? It's nothing they need to know. I don't ever tell them what the scores are, but it tells me as a, a resource person, these are the children that I need to be seeing. It tells you these are the people that need to be any part of that's going to work. But it ju it's really for you to go, okay, this is what I need to be doing. Because I still have children, even though we did all of section A through uh, H, I have nine fourth graders that don't know those words. Maybe I should have been them. She told me not to test them, but they don't know them. I can better go back and review those words. Third grade, same thing. So it's, it's a way for you to know where you're going to be each time. Uh, first graders, same thing. You're going to test at the beginning, but you won't test again until um, October. Then you're going to try to test the first week of every month. So you have September, October, November, or sorry, September, August, skip September, then you have October, right? November, December, January, February, March, April. You've, you've given them a, an assessment test at the beginning of every month. So you've gone through eight tests. So now you're in May, you've run out of tests. Good. Because in May, you're going to give test one again to see how it compares with test one that came out. Okay? So you're going to run through nine <coughs> tests that year, but test one will be at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. The, uh, only problem with that, if they've been doing that since kindergarten, by the time they get to fifth grade, they're probably going to know what the scores are going to do, but that's, that's what we have to do. All right, that's okay. Um, now, if you're in October, well, let's say you're in January, and you've given test five. You've given that list. And um, you, you're still doing your tallies, only you're going to have your, I do it direct, I just copy a test and tally it right on the sheet. You know, to say, okay, this is, this is the goal of where children are missing. The difference then, let's look at test five. And the kindergartners, the fifth graders, everybody has a very same test. If you look at list five, for instance, Everybody's giving this test on January. You get down here um, and you're tallying. This is the ones they missed. Um, if you get down and you're, you have an instructional level, uh, say through the word machine, if you're in third grade or fourth grade, you need to find out where these words are in the list and they're approximately. <coughs> Factory, you can use that original tally gives you a, um, a section to look at that coincides with the number. It'll tell you what list these words are from. You don't have to go back and look up each word. But you use that original tally sheet to kind of get you to where, okay, I have taught everything. We just finished, you know, before Christmas, we finished section X or T, where, okay? So my instructional level is down here where um, list T is, which is, if you look in this original tally sheet, list T is, pro is um, I've taught all the way through list T, I've taught through word 35. So if you get down and you are tallying this list, and at word 35, I would draw a line, this is my instructional level, and if at that point, you have more than half your class missing words that are prior to that. There's no reason for you to keep going. You need you have review to do. If and I when I say more than half the class, I'm talking about grade level too. If you if you happen to be lucky and you have a, a high level class 
and you only have three people that missed words back in here, but your colleague, had, they've missed, you know, 25 of the children in that class have missed those words. As a unit, you, it's not going to hurt any of them to go back and do that in here, but you must do that in here because you, there's no point in adding more information if they don't know the old words, right? Okay, yes? Is there a tally sheet for each one of these lists? Because no. I don't see it for the first one. Sorry, but there isn't. But you can make your own. Just copy the list. Photocopy this, this list, one copy. And I, when I, I do this for, or I've done it for three years for very much. Those teachers are pretty really spoiled. But, because <laughs> I've been grading them in, you know, assessing them. But you can just make your tallies right in here so you can see where they are, you know, just right on the sheet. And it's only for your purposes anyway, right? But yes. How do you know? Is it always the same number of, for each section from that list? Like, uh, yeah, you said, it, yeah, it's, very, it's pretty close. Yeah. So you could you yeah. could say, okay, there are probably six. And if you sit there and you say, okay, that says a section in. Well, we just taught him. We didn't do that word. Really. Then look it up. But it's pretty close. It, it, it should be okay. You have to use those section numbers, okay? But if you and you may be in the middle of section M and you haven't taught a particular word. So I'm talking about words that you've already taught. I would draw a line and say, okay, to this point, they should know those words. At this point now, when you're tallying, tallying um, you're gonna, you don't have to do anything after. I don't really care how many they miss after that instructional level. You don't have to go all the way through it each time because it doesn't give you any, any information anyway. It's just, if I've taught it, I'd like them to have retained it. If they're showing me they haven't retained it, then I need to go back and at least teach that word, and if I know there are other ones back there, keep that as part of your review. Okay? Okay. But again, it's going to work much better for you if you do that as a class level. If everybody's doing the same thing, because one of you gets a, a head of another, you're not going to be able to communicate as well as if you're all in the same place. Okay? Um, all right, there's another form back here that you're going to need every month. And you, again, uh, I just put it on the computer and type people's names in. But it's on page um, 44. Now that's a pretty small space in here. Again, those forms are available on the Spalding website. But it gives you by child, fill on your roster, and what their score was on this one for you to keep track of so that you can see what your, your uh, grade is doing. If you are in third grade and you're starting school, you're in what? Well, is third grade first month. So when you make when you average your scores, because your scores are in your till take you to that. When you average it, you it's giving you an idea of what you already know about that child and about your class. I have a class that is struggling, or I have a class that really seems on top of everything. This is just a verification of what we already know. Oh, I can see this child is progressing. These tests are going to just reinforce that for you. But it doesn't mean don't do the test. It's a, a tracking so that you can see what you need to do or not. The, um, when you grade the test, go back to page 42. As you're grading each test, you're going to need this assessment scoring method. And right here is where you're going to get your grade levels. It's much easier than I told you. Just right here it says write by the number of word there's your section on each uh, level. So if you're teaching um, in section O, you probably should have 21. They should get the words right at that point. The reason for the tally, I think you can see. Uh, and the tallying every month is kind of my own. I mean, I think it's really necessary. Because I can, you can give me a score and say, this child is in third grade, and he's doing great because he's in fourth grade, fifth month. 
Okay? Well, I want to know what that means, what his scores really look like. Because he may have been really lucky on some words from section R and S and T. And, but if he missed five words that you've already taught, his score's not that great. You've still got some review to do. And if you're only looking at the number of the score, that it's not going to tell you what, you know, do I need to be doing some review or not. Am I clear? Okay. So that's the point that I think we really do need to do all that tallying business because that's what tells you what review is necessary. That's where the evaluating comes in. Okay? That's when you say, wow, these kids need to go back further than I thought. Then do it. That's where you want. You know, that's what it needs to be done. Okay? And it could be, I just taught this section. We spent so much time in this section, and they missed every word. You know, 15 out of my class missed those same words we've just gone over. Okay? You probably better do them again. Probably, for one thing, you're set in your second year and there were new words. They have new words they haven't seen before. Maybe you have to slow down your, your process. Maybe they can't handle all 30 words. Okay? I'm not asking you to totally change your pattern, but those test scores help you know whether you should or you should not. It is not though, wow, they're doing great, so let's push them ahead faster. That, I think, you will pay I've seen classrooms uh, start out in section, well, we were in section, oh, but those words seem to be easy, which they are for uh, a fourth grade class. So we're going to put them up in section X. And then you're screeching on the brakes, and you're having to go back. Okay, so you think, oh, I shouldn't have skipped X section B and Q. I need to really go back there and take care of that, too. Okay. Any question on any of that? Yes. Uh, so when we are you know, geared up introducing new words to the class, we want to put that kind of class level. If you have those students go who are well ahead, maybe their parents are trying to force those words with them ahead, is it okay to like give them like maybe the list for future words? Okay. Yeah, there's no way the parents should be practicing ahead because they don't have a Okay? However, I will warn you, you're going to walk in and go, my kids know this stuff. What are we talking about here? All right. That's okay. And, and certainly third grade, second grade, whatever, right away, you can be doing core knowledge words. I can do, um, I, can, I can have done in first grade, we've done me doing, you know, we're talking about rule four, et cetera. I'm now studying Mesopotamia, right, in first grade. Well, we're going to write it in syllables. Mesopotamia. They can write in syllables. They can mark that entire word, okay, all the way through. And for your children who are saying, you know, like the mom's coming in and saying, give me more, give me more, because my child's bored to death. Now, he's able to do a lot of it. Great. That's one of his phenomenal Okay? You can introduce it to everybody, but not hold them accountable for it. And certainly in fourth and fifth grade, when you're studying your vocabulary and your core knowledge, those words are ones you can still, you immediately, you're going to be able to write a lot of that on, on the board. If you haven't already taught it, if you haven't taught it a, a concept, then I wouldn't introduce it with the core knowledge word. I would use the core knowledge word that I've already taught a concept. Okay? Does that make sense? Uh, <clears throat> but you're going to be surprised how much that you can do just by racing through section A and H, A through H. There's already so much that just from those markings, you're going to be able to take um, guys. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> two down, two lines. <laughs> um, but a lot of your core knowledge words certainly need to be be marked. I have um, for the fifth grade classes that where it costs the thing, those are part of the words every week. It's not to only the words in the list, especially for reviewing. They may be going back to it some old words because they saw, oh, they didn't retain this, but we're, just, we're not going to drop it. We're going to add, we're going to keep going in the list where we started, but maybe only five instead of ten every day. Okay? 
those uh, words that they're writing throughout the reading. And you may have a couple of four dollar towards them. And so you, that's why you're, 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 you will have children who are much higher level. Uh, so you give them something more challenge, not in the first two weeks. Okay? You, you talk to, your, to those parents and say, you know, I'm so thrilled that they've done school. They're, this is going to be you know, a nice review for them. And this is where we'll start. Don't you worry. We'll, we're going to move it up. We'll pick it up a few. Uh, right now, are teaching at this level. But I will keep that in mind because I will help them do more challenging as as an assignment. Okay, but the, this I would not suggest that you give anything out of this uh, to those parents because you will have some will say, you know, they're going to they're going to pre-teach the words. Well, they may not be teaching them the way you want that child to learn. It. You're the expert. And it's wonderful that they're that interested, but they, there's plenty for them to do with the words that you're sending home. Talk about that a minute. If you are now in, um, November, and by that certainly, or October even, by now, even three through five is in a harder list than that first section. Again, you will be testing section eight. You do quizzes make sure they know the markings and, and the rules that we've been talking about. But in October, uh, most of you, maybe not kindergarten yet, I have to look at the chart to know, but you're writing spelling words. And if you're going to be tested on a chart. You can arrange that in a way that is uh, most appropriate for you, but typically, and what I find is working well, is that we take those we have a list of 30 words we're trying to do. Obviously, you've been doing maybe 60 because you've been going through your book, right? So now, when you get into your, your actual grade level uh, list, you're going to be typically teaching 30 words a week. The teacher's Guide is designed to teach 30 words a week. To do that, you don't, well, most classrooms don't give them all those words together. They give them 10 words. And the assignment then is to do those 10 words on Monday at home. All right? <clears throat> In the beginning, you're going to help them do that homework with you so that they can do it correctly. On Tuesday, they'll do the other 10 words. On Wednesday, they'll do the other 10 words with you. You're teaching it in class. They're doing it as assignment. On Thursday, you're reviewing all of it. And I would still be doing it with marks at this point. The homework goes home with all the marks, and, but not, it's not necessary for them to write the rules every time, even at a higher, higher level. They, you still have to write it in your notebook, but as far as studying it, they do need to have the marks, so they're still going through, theoretically, saying it's sound and marking it as they go. Okay? On Friday, again, you'll give them the test of those 30 words, but there are no markings. Just any spelling words, right? Now, when they to do that homework, your the, your parents have a huge opportunity here to help those children because when they do the homework, if the child is in the other room doing his homework and they don't hear anything, they are doing their homework. We want them to do their homework the same way that you're doing it in class. So they will take home a, a list of their first graders that says me do and go at on A. Or I don't know the words in your list, but you have ten words that they're taking home. Your assignment and the way you're practice with them in school, we're not going to look at that list. Your mom has that list. And you're, she's going to say me, you write me, you be, do your good food, food market, act, market, act, just like we do in class. You're going to go through the entire list, children. You are not going to write me, 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 and do, 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 do. That's why you need to do it with the 25 as well so you can talk to parents. And your teacher's not aware. It's going to be a list of words. The parent says, without the child seeing, the 
the way I've been asking you to practice, if you are actually hearing it, so they have a chance to learn it. By writing me, 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 do, 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 they did their homework, but they didn't learn it the, as well as they could have. <coughs> they actually had it dictated ten times. And you can tell your parents to you know, make it as close to the way I'll be testing it on a Friday as possible. I'm not going to give them a, a list to copy. I'm going to say the word, and that's all they're going to have to help them write the word. So do that with the book. That's the way you practice for the test. Practice it the way you're going to take the test. So you're going to do one at home. You can't do, can't go, at, on, take, whatever. Then you're going to cover it. Um, and you're going to say to them again, me, do, and go, at, on, a. And then you're going to cover that, and you're going to do it again. Now, <clears throat> That is not two hours of work. That is, if the child is at, if you've taught the child how to do the homework at school, they've gone through it with you, cover it up, let's do it again on the next line, and you, you're practicing their homework with them for a while. <coughs> if, if, they, if you give a second grader 10 words to do three times, it's at the most 30 minutes of work, and that's if they're having difficulty, okay? If it's a child who's not having difficulty, that's done in about 10 minutes. If you have parents done, this is taking three hours for us to get through those words. We can't do it. Then probably what's happening is there's most of that time, two and a half hours, is being spent arguing about who's going to do it, and when they're going to do it, and what they want to do instead of it. A whole different problem than your problem, you know, giving the homework. <coughs> yes. Would you have the parents check after they've written the first time to make sure they're not Thank you. Uh, no, I'm going to have them check it as they write it. The parent has a new job that they didn't know they were getting. Optimum is for that parent to be watching what he, what he does as he writes it. Okay? So if he writes me, he goes back and says, e, and then Or he says, and writes a double. Right there. The parent says, well, let's put a line to that. Let's talk about that again. What are you going to write first? And then e. The parent does not have to know what all those marks mean. That's when they get panicky. You know, he's bringing these things home, he has numbers and lines. I don't know how to help it. So you know how to read me. That's all you have to do. Say me. And he has been taught well. So he knows he's supposed to write. He's supposed to say. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give instructions to your parents. He must say it aloud as he writes. He must go back and say it aloud as he marks. You're going to tell him that. So the parent is listening for it. He may be saying wobbly do, but you know, but and the parent goes, okay. But at least he's he's trying to say something. He's writing the right letter, and the parent says, well, in in your in your homework page, there's a line here. Oh yeah, the child. If you've done your job in school, which I know you will, <coughs> the child says, oh yeah, I'm going to put a line here, and at that point, you probably say. So you may see it again. So parent doesn't have to know what that rule or that mark is necessarily. They'll probably be learning it if they're helping with the homework. But the, the parent does need to say, your teacher said to put a line there. What's that about? Okay? Yes. So that, that list that the parent was referring to, is that something that the children have done in class or do we provide that? You provide that. Okay. You're going to uh, <clears throat> Um, give them a list, and depending how you want to do it, uh, but you will give them a list of those ten words, and this is the list you do the next day. This, using me to and go as an example is not a good example because you, you need to be still doing the homework with them. Definitely, but you know, as you progress, they'll be reading those words and only ten at a time, 
except in kindergarten, you won't give them that many, even after you start, which you're giving them about five words a week with some programs, right? That kinder or grade one will, you'll be giving them ten words, and on Tuesday they're doing ten words. And then the, the I like doing it three times because the first time through, maybe they don't know, maybe they're struggling a little bit. So they immediately go back and remember those ten words again. By the third time, they have a chance to retain them. Okay? Right. Yes. And then would you give the ten words each day or at the beginning of the week? Give the list of 30. No, I would not give the parents 30 words because you have some mom back there that's going to make that child sit there and tell you later it took us way too long to do that. Okay. Uh, so you're going to do ten words and... Uh, They'll do the next 10 the next day. Then on Thursday, before the test, you can, different classrooms approach it differently. You can review all of those words with your uh, class, with so that everybody's on board with all writing them. Not three times, just we're having a test on these tomorrow. Let's make sure everybody knows what these words are going to be. We go through all of them then, all 30, on that Thursday. Some, I've seen some classrooms, uh, especially younger children, you can have a pre-test on Thursday. If you don't miss anything, you get pre-Friday. Well, that's fine for the ones who get pre-Friday, but you're going to hear it from the parents whose child didn't get pre-Friday. That's the only couple issue there, you know, so um, that they don't have to take the test. So certainly I wouldn't start that right away. If you see the most the class is going to, they may not need to, every Friday to take that. That second time that they always do in perfect scores. If that's your judgment, you can always have it in you, then, then do the test again on, on Friday. I certainly wouldn't do it for the, the old ones. And you're going to see with the old ones too. They're going to plan for that test the night before. Yeah, I can do those words. I know them for my Friday test, and they didn't study it correctly, so they don't know. And you, that's what you're going to have to catch. It could be <clears throat> it could be that um, you might even have partners reciting the words to another. You tell you, you sit here. Let's take ten minutes. Help her with her homework. Give her her first ten words, and then she turns around you. Because as you're telling it to her, you're seeing what those marks are. You're thinking it too. And, and they love being a teacher. Oh, you didn't leave a break in school. Oh, you didn't put a two. You know? And so they can be discussing it that way. So that they're using their time and actually learning how to learn the words. Just to sit and copy it. And I say to parents and I say to students, if all you needed to do was copy, or if all you needed to do was look at those words. I know these words. I, I've already studied these words. I know these Great. And you don't need me. But that means you can spell everything you've ever seen. I doubt it. Let me test you. Let me see, let me see what you do. If you don't need to write those words, then just look at them. You're done. I don't need to have any more I can do to educate you. All right? But we know that's not true. And so we're trying to find the best way that we can is to get that information in the brain stored so they can get it back on the paper. And if they have three chances to do it, and obviously that's not the only time you're going to be doing it, especially uh, early grades, but also uh, third and up. It's just that I know what your third and up looks like. I know you can't spend four hours a day on Spaldi, but you should be spending two hours every day all across the school on language arts, which includes Spaldi, and this year it's heavy duty Spaldi, and grammar, and reading. Next year, hope, we're hoping you don't have to spend as much time just on school. You still have to spend two hours on language arts, so you have more time then to devote to grammar that they can do, you can help them write compositions, and uh, reading literature. Okay? But now we're trying to front load that information so that you don't have to invest it later. Okay? Uh, but all of you should have a two hour language art block. Okay, any other questions about that? Yes. Okay, so in the beginning, the words are easier. So let's say third graders can do 15 words a day. You want to do more? You want to vary depending on what they can do. And let's say you want to 
one day, you run out of time, and you've only got seven more to done. You just send those seven home for homework, or? Um, yeah, but you may have to, you, exactly. And you may have to do those seven, the other three words after recess or whatever. Okay. You know, you still are going to follow the 30. But okay. in the beginning, in third grade, you definitely are going to be doing 10 words. You're going to be doing me to and go that first year. So you're maybe doing 50 words that week. You're filling that notebook, explaining what the marks mean, explaining how to uh, read them back, find sounds just like you've been doing for me all week. Okay? So definitely the one, the um, grade three and up, plug up the notebook. It's like I, you know, some days in the beginning, you're going to have to start as slowly as I did with you. Because you may have some, again, who have been spells and students, but you have others who have never thought that way before, have no idea what you're talking about. So you're going to have to do me, E, first up, as you write it, write E, go back, E, underline your tone, what that line means, so that you're getting the ball which is. It's slow in the beginning, just like it was here. And yesterday we were writing lots and lots of books. Okay? So we were in great for Alright? Again, with the assessment, a third grade class, if your third grade class is scoring right at third grade or below, you are going to have to spend a lot more time reviewing with those children. When you, when you, um, Assess these and you give them your scores. Everybody understands how to do that. You saw that, that, uh, um, you know. If your third grade class comes out and they're way below grade level or even sitting right at grade level, don't go too fast for them. They're holding on by their fingernails, okay? You may have one of them who was a sixth grade level, one who's a first grade level, which is you can't say my class is in fourth grade level. You've got one scoring really, really high, and that's most likely to happen. One that's still scoring in grade one or two. That's why those assessments are done. So those that child who's still scoring at first grade level needs so much more attention. The program does not change. You're still going to do the same work. Don't pull your old stuff out of your um, work that you've done for the last 10 years and hope it'll fit in with Spalding, please just give this a try for this this year. And and do the same thing. You just have to do it more often with those children who are below level. You may have you may have to you know take them aside and when the aide is doing is teaching science and take them aside and spending more work with them. Because if it, it's important for them to learn science and all the core knowledge, but if they can't read and write, we're not going to get it. You take the, the A takes them aside. They give them more, more time to practice us. Maybe that child should do it six times a day. I would never assign that, but by the time you've done it with them, you, you uh, let them have the uh, help of having more practice with it. That's what the point is. So you don't ever give anybody I wouldn't give, ever give anybody more than three times a night of playing. And even um, as you go, well, I wouldn't reduce it too much, especially this first year. And I would never say, well, you only do it once a night. You don't really learn it once a night. You, you people are all trained. You are the best You may not have been trained in education, but you, you had some training. And you took those books home. I, get, I didn't have a perfect book. Okay? Okay? And if you can't, then you should, certainly can't expect of an eight year old. Let's review it some more. Okay? All right. Um, anything else about the assessments? Because that's really a big deal to me. Yes? I just want a little more clarification on the wording. When you're introducing a whole class assessment for the first time with the little ones, would you say, I need a list. Can you help me make a list of words that will show me what I need to teach? Uh, you I, I would. I would say today if we're at the very beginning of school, and some of you came from Kobe, some of you came from Wisconsin, some of you came from all over, you know, the place. 
So we have a very rich classic. What you already know. And so we're going to go through a group of words. I want to see which ones are hard for you and which ones are not hard for you. I, I want to spend less time on the ones that are difficult, more time on the ones that um, give you more challenge. Okay. And then I'm going to say the word. I'm going to repeat the word in a sentence. I'm going to say the word again. And in, uh, in August, they don't even know the sound about that. Okay, so you don't even know saying anything about it. Next month you do. Keep your sounds inside your mouth to your ear. Don't shout out the words. We're not trying for you to help your neighbors. But, you know, write your words. And then at the end, you pick up the papers and they never see it again. You don't say, okay, you scored 32, you scored 40, and you scored 5. You know? They don't even, even they know whether they know it or not. It's really for you to know this child needs more help, but this is where I thought they knew section of. Whoops. I, I don't. I really need to be doing some review. Let me talk about review, and I'll talk about that more in class little meetings, but it won't happen until um, probably January, February. If you go, if you're a fourth grade class and you see when you tally up your scores that um, 17 people missed field, when we talk that page at the beginning of the year, we talk about I, B, and E, I over and over. The 17 out of 30 significantly says, I need to teach this again. That's what that's about. If you have, if you go through and you're in section, T or Q or T or um, U, I'm thinking fifth grade now. And they did, they don't remember, or maybe you, have, you started in section uh, R, and they are missing every one of them, or at least certainly more than fifty percent are missing words in section Q. You better go back into Q. They've never learned those words, okay? And certainly this first year, nobody's ever taught, okay? Before it's been second grade taught it, third grade taught it, fourth grade by fifth grade, they remember it, right? But um, you need to go back and teach those words. Sometimes you need to go back and reteach. You're starting fifth grade in section R, you go through and you find a thing that's, there are only three words out of section R on my list, and they missed every one of them. And they missed uh, every one, everybody missed section S. And when I say everybody, I usually take a, um, I don't want more than 20% um, of my students to miss a work, okay, if it's one I've taught. You want to have 80% mastery. You don't have to go back just because three people miss the word, okay? But if nine people miss the word, you need to revisit it. And if more than 10 people miss every word from that section, you need to review the section again but not reteach the entire section. What you need to do, and I'll help you with this uh, in January, if, if that's, and it probably will happen. Um, I'm not trying to put it on you, but it's possible for it to happen. You may have to go back and review. Instead of reteaching the entire section, you're going to do an assessment of the entire section. Let's find out which words in the sections are the ones I do need to reteach. You'll have to take the time to do that. So you'll have to go through and do it like a spelling test. We've done these words. Let's see which ones you remember and go right through it. And it should be no more than two days you have to do that. Maybe you can get it done in one of your class. But go through it and again, you're going to have to tap it. Which you tell it to go up. And find out which ones of those words I need to teach again. Okay? I want to reteach the entire list again. But it, when that happens too, it, it's a time when I can help you say, well, this may be another way you want to approach this word when you teach it. You've already taught it much. Maybe there's something more you need to give to that, that particular word and help them in Does that make sense? Okay, yes. Sir, sure, you mentioned a little bit, but you can have the assessment and five times in the it's a single word, obviously you're going to be a lesson. So what's the middle ground? If 20% if of your class, so you have 30 people, if more than six people are missing a word that you've re taught or that you have already taught, okay, um, 
I might, in the beginning, only go back to that word on, the, on that list. It could have been a random word that they just don't remember. Okay? So I'm going to teach initially that word on, you know, from the test. I would never pre-teach a test ever, ever, ever. I would never say, oh, this word's coming up and we've been missing it. Make sure you all know this rather than, you know, a um, course of call test on Monday. Never. I don't even know which words are come from which list. Okay? Just hear my words, let's we'll see where we are. Alright? But if you see that every you're in section T doesn't matter, and every single, you know, more than twenty percent, eight of your students in this word proper, and that's back back in section, then teach the word proper. That's our review. When you're quizzing during the week, you should always throw in a review word. You know, maybe put in uh, one or two for marking. Just spell these words. These are old words we keep missing. This, and you may have them as part of your assignment as you go. You can see they're still missing them. Or you may um, say, you know, throw them in with our review words and, and test them that way. But don't just leave the words and think you'll never see them again. You probably will. And especially if you're getting sentences from them and they're, they're misspelling whatever word, and they're all misspelled with, and you better teach it again. Okay? If you haven't taught it the first time, you teach it again. Okay? Um, you may not teach it. You, I don't know if it's in some. Yeah. No, it's not in your section. In case or that, but you could have, you have fourth grade and fifth grade. If you have plenty of them, misspell it, I would say 20% or 80% next Okay? I'm not going to stop for for those five children, but I know that those five children need more attention. So my A may be taking, you may only have one who desperately needs attention. You've got a triage. And so that child, needs, that A needs to be right there with them. Are, you know, are you writing it? Are you starting at 2 on the clock every time? So did you find that depth in your mouth before you wrote it? So that you catch it before it happens. It's not, I see I have a one mistake after another for five weeks, now we'll do something. Try to catch it immediately, which is easier for me to stand and say than for you to do, obviously. But that's that's what you want to happen. That you, you're taking care of it before it becomes a bigger problem. Yes? So handwriting tests or assessments are incorporated into the spelling test? Would you formally grade their handwriting at that point? I would do that on quizzes. I would say, or you may on a, on a WPR. You may say we're going to have a uh, we're going to have WPR today, and we're going to have you turn it in. Our focus today, reading your book, they talk about choosing a focus. Our focus is today: are you writing parallel lines? Some of the teachers are having trouble getting parallel lines. Make sure you practice that. Are you are you starting at the top, going straight down? Are your clock runners starting at two on the clock? You are going to do all of those in first grade on one. You're going to do one of those. Today's focus is going to be to start at 2 of the clock. Today's focus, if you're in fifth grade, if you're writing a short letter, talk about that because not everybody took that with them. If we're starting a short letter, no matter, pretty much no matter what, no matter changes to that. But if your letter and manuscript started at midpoint, you have to get there somehow. You can't start it here. You have to start with that upstream. And if you don't, today in your um, WPR, I'm going to take off points for that. Okay? So you can have a handwriting focus then. When you give a test on Friday to see if they can retain those um, <coughs> 30 words, it's not a handwriting grade. It's, it's more spelling, but if the B is, is not is now a D, that's wrong. If they don't dot an I, it's wrong. If and on the assessment test, even so more than that. If if you didn't cross the T, don't expect me to figure out what you meant. I know that you know in the word wet there's a T, but if you don't cross it, I can't assume you know it. Okay? So it dotting your eyes, crossing your cheeks, all of the handwriting we're teaching in the very beginning 
We don't just let them fly out the window. But if it's legible enough for me to read it, I'm not going to grade their handwriting on that writing text. I have other times during the week that I'll give that more focus. Okay? Yes. Isn't there a community of parents about this process? Is that one on the video online, or is that going to be You're in our team? Yes. The parents are going to have to hear it. Okay. You're going to communicate it. Just talk about scrolling. Um, and so I'll be, I'm going to show them the handwriting. We're going to talk about how they um, have to do their, their homework with them. Okay. And they're going to walk away feeling just like you do today. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, I can't do the entire method with them, and I'm not going to do it for more than an hour. That's all the information they get. So that they are going to see what a photograph card looks like. And I'm hoping that in all of your schools, your parents have photograph cards. I think that our take uh, had that as part of the package. Each student doesn't need it, but each family does. Okay, so they have those cards. So they don't have to excuse for not doing it. Yes. Yeah. They switch to each student. I have a kinder and first grader coming in. Okay. And they said when I checked out for pop materials that they were going to use and at home, so each student needed one? They, they will use photographs in class, but it won't be their photograph box. They don't bring those to school. Okay. okay. That's so good. Point. If you lose one of the cards, you have another one. Mm -hmm. Or your kindergartner is going to be in a different place. And that, I think that's great if, they, if you have, you know, uh, some families have four children in your school. I'm not sure they need four boxes, but if they do, then, you know, it's by. That child has his own box. Some some children, you know, the children you know, sit and play with the cards and they're sitting and do one and do another one. But there shouldn't be an excuse for the parents not doing it with the child unless it's because they're you know, so intimidated. And yes, I know how busy they are, and but if we're asking for five most of the most I would ask them to be doing programs with them. You've done your photograms, and if you only got through three of them in 10 minutes, that's what we get. But they're not going to sit and drill photograms for an hour with those children. Okay? They've already been doing it with you. And so when they do it at home at night, if, you, if they work 10 minutes, I should say the most 15, but not chain the child to the chair until you know all the uh, 45 photographs, okay? Another thing, stop talking about that, it indicates in your book, well, if they know these, we put those aside, we just want to work on these now. I'm not, I don't agree with that, because I, what happens is that you're, um, if you put those others aside and you don't keep reviewing them, they're going to come up now with other problems. So you don't have to do only those old ones. But you want to throw some easier ones, and when I say easy, it's only because we've done them more. Keep those, some of those other ones in for nothing else but for, for that child who doesn't know them to feel a little bit successful. You know? You obviously want to focus on the ones that are still giving the problem. Make sure those are in there, or the ones you've introduced this week. Make sure those are always in there. But throw in some of that old stuff, too, so they can go, well, at least I know that. I don't know who you yet, but I know both. Yeah. You, you know, obviously you don't have to keep the whole alphabet in there for them after they uh, retain them. Okay? But, uh, yeah. uh, I'm just wondering how the um, grammar and composition and um, word comprehension works in the Okay, I haven't gone through that purposely. Because um, Ray Parks is still trying to develop a good um, In the meantime, though, there's a lot of good information in your book. I would certainly be using your um, um, heirs list words to be talking about how a sentence is formed, 
we are modeling what a good sentence looks like using some of the words we've had today, as it, and that you're modeling it before you're asking them to just suddenly come up with their own sentence. If you, um, if you, if you go to the Bauer program, there's a lot of modeling the sentence rather than just composing your own. I don't want to know your proposal, so I want you to see why this is a good sentence. Okay, so it depends on how that's developed. Um, but in composition, get familiar with what's already in writing or reading. I think the language arts part of it is really pretty good. Yeah. It talks about compound words initially, we're going to compound sentences, we're going to complex sentences. Um, the, I think you can see from this week, I wouldn't say just open a book and read that script, but I don't think anybody can teach that one anyway. But it's a guide for you to get where you want to go with it. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with doing that, especially the language arts part. The reason that we didn't adopt the reading with the comprehension part is because there was, have you any of you read the reading part of that in the book? Didn't have any free time this week, what's the problem? <laughs> okay, when you get into the reading, section of the book is still good and it's still information that will help you teach them if the difference in what great hearts will do and what Spalding is asking you to do there's so much language that goes with the um found the reading report or foundation the Spalding foundation in that if you're reading a passage they may say okay they're training children to go, okay, at this point, I hold the card scene. I'm making connections to something I knew before and I'm adding to it. And now I'm reformatting, and they hold up that card at first grade level. And then now I am monitoring my comprehension. Okay, there's obviously nothing wrong with them monitoring their comprehension and reformatting and all the things that they talk about in the book. But I, want, I would prefer you as teachers to know that and guide them toward it without having to insist that they use that language to say, this is exactly what I'm doing right now. That I'm having to stop the middle passage and say, okay, now I'm monitoring my comprehension. And I know that this is going to happen because, you know, using an exact verbiage that is in your book. That's why we didn't adopt that one. All right? However, since you brought it up, let's go ahead and look at your uh, comprehension book that I did give to you, because I still think these are useful. And the, the ideas that Spalding gives you, again, is still useful. These, though, as far as uh, comprehension, you all have one that looks uh, a little bit different, because it's by grade level. When you look at these books, there's one that tells you how to use the book, and there's another one that has the passages. The beauty of these books, as far as I'm concerned, is that they are short passages and you can talk to them about comprehension techniques to use, ta tactics to use, how did you figure out that answer, let's go back to the paragraph, find that answer, you can put it um, up on the board, do you have any kind of other game you using, or no? Okay. How it's going to work, maybe you have to so just one pack, you know, one of these, so that everybody can see the, the page, you know, the one story. Um, but so that they're all together, working on it together. It's not just hand out and fill this in before I go you know, the story. You're to start out as using it a way to actually uh, help them through comprehension. Instead of when you're reading Charlotte's Web, talking about comprehension for the entire chapter. Okay. These are short passages to give them techniques to be able to use to figure out why it is. This one that I'm looking at, um, okay. um, and it's a whole passage about um, mom getting tired of picking up after the children, basically. And so we're going to have a new system, we're going to put away twice, and it's going to be put it away, and then you can earn it back. That's what this is about. All right. So then, at the, the next part, it says this town was a field barn 
Yeah, but what we're talking about here, this pound, is not a word that they use in their vocabulary. And pound in your voice. Okay? So what was it? Was it the feel? No. But, but you have to help them get to that comprehension. These stories, again, are written, uh, I think, in the 30s by Dr. Um, McCall and um, either Dr. Harvey or Dr. Kratz, depending on the grade level. They were written a long time ago. But they're still valid. I've heard teachers say, you know, those are old stories. I'm not going to do that. Well, hello, at Great Hearts, we teach stories that are older than these. There's nothing wrong with them hearing some old vocabulary. All right? And there's nothing wrong. And then what you'll do is just keep an easier way for you to be able to work together as a class level to um, come up with um, why you chose the answer you did. In McCall, uh, McCall Harvey, the first um, story is about a little boy who woke up with a stomach ache and he, he didn't feel well, and so they had to call the doctor. And did you have any um, thing for breakfast? Well, I had a cookie. How many cookies? One, no. <laughs> you know, well, that's why you had the study days, where that points to and all those children have been in that place. In your, in that book, McCall Harvey, which you were using in kindergarten and grade one, it's not a multiple choice answer. It's a yes or no. And you can do that together as the class. Why do you think, you know, is this story about a boy? Some will say yes and some will say no. Some will say no to the little mothers. What's the name? What's the name? It may, say, may have said it's hard to me. I know it's important because it said P. I take them back to, it says in that, in that passage, you tell, what's the sentence, boys and girls, that told me that it was a boy? This sentence, whatever that first sentence was, it guides them back to it. So you're, you're helping them, just with that one passage, use tactics that explain <coughs> the comprehension in the story. Yes. So are they listening at the younger grade, maybe first grade they're reading it? If I would, in kindergarten, I would not do this for quite a while. I would do it maybe March, okay? Then if you have um, children who have, who can't, like I wouldn't put anybody in level one in first grade, you're going to start with that McCall Harvey. And you may be doing it, um, um, later, you know, maybe November. Just, and you may also be wanting to do it just to monitor where you are. What, what, what kind of groups do I want them to be in? Do I, you know, if I have some who can read, you know, all of these, and I have some who can't read this at all, so I can help you individually take them out to know where they really are. I would not encourage too much. Well, I, I don't encourage any <laughs> of reading it to them. It, it let me back up. Of course, you're going to read to them, and you're going to ask, you, you want them to have an oral comprehension. But if you do too much of that with McCall Harvey in kindergarten, they get into first grade, and they already know the story. You've jaded that for them. Okay? So we don't want you to only read from this, you know, so that now when it's their turn to read it, they're making all kinds of mistakes because they think they know the story. They already know what the outcome is. They already know why the child hurts. We don't want to jade them. Uh, okay? Um, there are only, oh, I don't know, 78, 80 uh, passages here. So obviously you are going to be doing them every single day. You have more than 78 days. <clears throat> but you're also going to do them immediately, the first week of school. But if you really want to use the, grade, the grading system in here, which I would encourage as you go along, you're going to need at least, maybe you, you maybe want to do 10 passages in a month, okay? Because one passage is not enough to say that's their reading comprehension school. You have to do it enough and average it out to say that's about where they are. The, the grading in it is at the bottom of your page, except for uh, McCall Harvey. But it says if you read the whole thing um, and you got one right, you were at second grade level. Right? This is a third grade. Okay. If you got them all right, you were at fifth grade, eighth grade level. Okay. 
Okay? So, but the next one says, uh, if I go maybe one back, this one, if you got them all right, it was an eighth grade level. So you see, you can't take just one and really have some kind of an average. Okay? Keep in mind, it's, it's to help you help them with, with different tactics. And I would encourage you, again, to read what's in your writing or degree because it may give you some ways to approach it that you haven't thought of. What's that that you said, like if you get this thing right here in the eighth grade level? Right here. Right here in this book, not that one. That's what you have to do. Pick up your grade book and open it up to a passage. At the bottom, it says that many right there is a grade book. Okay? But again, it's, um, you're going to have to have certainly more than three to say this is about the really comprehension level. Um, same thing with the assessment. Don't beat up on yourself if you. You could go really great in October. Oh my gosh, my my uh, class average in fourth grade and the class average is or in third grade and the class average is fourth grade. Aren't we great? And then the next month it goes down to 4.0. What did I do? Typically, what you're going to see is it's going to go up at least a month every time. Sometimes it's going to go up more than that. So take the credit. Okay. But if, it's, if you see the scores are slipping, it could be individuals who are slipping, do more than you study individual. Also, if it continued, if it, it was one little spike, obviously, and then it goes down and it stays down, that was your anomaly, was that spike. So it's a monitor for you, it's not to hang your hat on. But I, I think, I mean, I've used them for many, many years, and they do show me pretty much what I already. I know that if a child is scoring right at grade level, that may make the mom feel good, and, and usually on most scores that makes us feel good. If he's in third grade, second month, if he scores third grade, third month, great. Not so great. It means that score says he's able to do the work, but he's just kind of holding on. I would like for them to be at least one grade above placement. So if you're in first grade, fifth grade, I want their score to be second grade. Okay? After a few years, their toss, quite frankly, is two grades above placement. Okay? And, but that doesn't mean what the class is, that means what the average is. But that's your goal, you know? You, get, you want them above placement. If they're not above placement, you may have children in your classroom who don't just be English. You know, you're going to have to deal with that before they're ever able to write English. And so you, you have different problems to consider. But your goal is to get it. Don't, don't feel like um, everything's perfect if, you're, if your score is barely hovering above place to keep working so we can get it up. Doesn't mean we'll throw this class out and we'll start again because I don't like what's happening. Just means that's you're gonna get in order to get them up, you're gonna it's gonna be more of a challenge for all of you. Alright? And if you if that's what it is, that's what it is. The main point is did you see the progress? Is there a difference in what they knew in October and what they know in January? And you're gonna see that happen and um, happy with those results. Um, okay, anything about that? Yes. Would it be wrong to use this, but to separate it into comprehension and reading comprehension? So say there was one passage and I wanted to just read it aloud and have them listen and then answer questions to see if they comprehended it and can retain the information? I'm okay with that. Okay. The, um, um, but again, it's for the tactics that you're using. What the purpose of doing it is, how do you know the answer to that question is thus and such? Mm -hmm. Because what did I say to you as I was reading that made you think that? So, and I talked to, um, uh, particularly early on, to children, when you're reading those words to me, I, do you like movies? Everybody likes movies. When you start reading, I want you to put a move, I want you to get those pictures in your head immediately. 
you say um, okay. Larry's mother was putting icing on a cake she had made. Do you see Larry in your hand? Good, because they go. Okay, well let's let's figure out what you think Larry might look like. Because so far they haven't told us. Okay, he may have red hair, he may have blue hair. But what picture do you have in your head of that child? Do you see his mother? What are they doing? They're putting the icing on the cake. So you're just bringing them through from what you've already said. But get those pictures started early. I have, uh, I've seen many children, they come from a school and you know, they're saying, oh, his, his uh, reading is great. And, and I agree, very fluent and it's He's engaging as he reads, and I want to listen to him. No clue of what he read. Okay? Bring you right away through. You cannot take fluency as a full indication that they comprehend. I may see another child who labors through it, and again, if he's laboring much, you're putting him in the book. It's too difficult to put him in the book to her. Okay? Um, but because it shouldn't be. Too laborious. It's okay if they have to decode as they go, but not. We're not teaching spalding during reading. Okay, we're teaching it. That's what we're doing. All this other work, but that child may be slower and get through it, and they can tell you everything they read about that passage. There's nothing wrong with this comprehension. It's just the coding skills. Okay, so children who've seen me over the years, the teachers will say. You know, he just doesn't, he has really poor reading habits, really poor comprehension skills. Many times, after working with him, there's nothing wrong with his comprehension. He comprehends everything. He just can't get there. He doesn't have the skills to be able to read it in the first place. So that's not comprehension. That's about understanding the language, and that's why I was going to help him. Um, Yes. I know you just said that you should teach reading and scolding. Um, how are we supposed to incorporate these books um, in the classrooms with, say, the stack of books that we get as a class? So for third grade, we get the line which in the wardrobe. How do we put those together, or are they supposed to be just a joke in the wardrobe? What? Should we do a I'm sorry. Um, well, you're going to, you're, it's a separate exercise. You're going to be reading um, Pinocchio, okay? And of course you're going to be talking about comprehension there too. Yeah. What do you think that passage said to you? What you what's a word in that, in that uh, what's the word that tripped you up that you really didn't understand what the book, that vocabulary means? This is for practice to do those same skills, just in a shorter version. That's all. This one has an end. Pinocchio is going to take you a few weeks to get there. Okay. This one is just, you know, two paragraphs, and you use it to practice those skills. That's all. Okay. Also, in these passages, um, if you're teaching how to write um, a paragraph that gives information, okay, the really nice thing that Spalding has done for us, the Spalding Institute has done, you have passages if you, if, if you get familiar with this guide, it tells you these are the passages that are informational, these are the passages that are totally narrative, so you can talk about plot, you can talk about character, and the elements there without having to repeat all the way back to you. You know, what's this story about? Who are the characters here? Okay? Things that you'll have to touch as you're, as you're writing or as you're reading. And the, and the nice thing about this little handy guide that you were given, it tells you, here's a passage that talks about, that is a narrative. This is a passage that's informative, it just talk, it's non-fiction, right? Or this one is informative. It gives us information about Alaska, but I really don't think this person existed. Okay? That kind of thing. So you can use those kinds of tools to get you there. This is not something you have to do one story after another. It would be advised that you don't start in back because they do get more difficult. But if there's something, if you're studying about Alaska and there's a passage in section A that talks about the dogs bringing medicine to Alaska, 
might be a good time to, you know, you can either read it to them or read, you know, read it together. Um, however you want to use these, but don't just put them on a shelf and forget they were there, because they are good tools for you. When I say we don't teach folding during reading, is I would never, ever say, okay, turn to passage 10, and the first sentence we're reading together says, two mules were going along the lonely road. Which one of those words has a no jolly? No. Let's go through and mark this sentence. You know, find out what happened in these sentences. No, never. Okay? I just want to see the mules going along the road. That's all I'm going to do when I'm teaching reading. Okay? But that's why, again, and again, I will say we do the spelling, the writing first. Don't get so excited about getting those young children in books to read. You're going to get a lot of pressure from parents and even your own thing. Well, you know, I taught last year and we were reading in the first week. You spent a lot of time helping them to code. You may not need to. You're going to be surprised what they're going to be able to do without that help. If they already you know, have skills that they're uh, there with. It looks like they're missing right now, so I think the kindergartners, and maybe even if you have a, a low first grade, uh, and trivia can, you know, make it accessible to you too. You know, I think the books are done. But I have a, a series of books that I've used for beginning readers. <clears throat> that were, uh, some of the old educators publishing books, and they start off back and tap. Are any of you familiar with Mac and Tab? Okay. I like those books because they have a plot. They're funny. There's a, there, there are characters in it. I'm not fond of Bob books because everybody's bored of it. You know, it shows you can read a couple of words. And then, so when you're able to give them that first Mac and Tab book, if they've gone, I wouldn't give it to them until we were, you know, Way past, we've certainly introduced more than just the alphabet. But, and we, we've also been marking words, we're talking about why words work, so that when they pick up that book, they can read Mac as a, as a cat and, and Tab is a rat. And Mac ends up meeting his friend the rat, and they all are sad and they worry children. In uh, another 20 books, they're all going to be safe and everybody's fine. Okay? Um, but the, there are books that they can actually read. It's very difficult to, for the parents to go to the library and find a book that that child can read. They're sitting there trying to help them read it, and they're not able, the, the parent is not able to be able to do that. So you're going to give them reading to do, you know, at, at the school. So that they can be reading, that those books can go home. The ones that I have are out of print, so they were. But, um, and you may want to make more, you know, for your class, and you can have it as uh, things that you can use. You can still buy the books, the particular book, but they're not the same ones that I gave to one of the teachers. These were done along with our early 70s or something like that. The latest was the problem with it. There's nothing wrong with the ones that they're writing, that they're doing now. Want to buy those? It's just that every time they're revised, frankly, they're dumbed down a little bit, or they may throw some what they call sight words in. They're, you know, if, if you give that book to the same child and it has the word yellow in it, they're not ready to read that word. You've got to talk about syllables now. You've got to talk about remember how O is there. You know, there's a lot that you're having to teach now as you're reading. That's not where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be back here in spelling. So. The the uh, the books have you know there are more women in it, there are more minorities in it, so that it's you know friendlier that way to everybody. But the vocabulary in it has changed too, and the reading readiness has changed. If you buy it today, as if you bought if you used it as a gave you a copy of it. All right, that's the that's the only difference. But also in that early reading, um, Spalding Foundation puts out some books that I would recommend. Uh, they're a little more difficult than the ones that I'm giving to these early readers. But they do say, they do, they go in line, and it's in your text, they go in line with um, what photogram you're teaching that way. So that they're, that you're using that and reinforcing it through the reading. 
Okay? And those you know, can be made available to install the foundation. Okay? And they're, they're nice, but they're just a little more difficult for that early. Okay. Just be careful with whatever you choose, whatever you've used before, then do it. I don't know every, other, every book out there. If you have a, a group of um, early readers that you want to use with some of your children, just go back and put a different eye on them than you did before. Are these ones that they're really capable of already reading before they get there? You know, so that they're successful, some of them will be more successful than others as you start. But don't give them a book full of, you know, the first book is about a sandwich. How do they know to read that? You know, unless they, they read the book. Obviously, some of them are do that. But you're trying to train them for, you know, training them. It doesn't mean that <clears throat> just because I haven't told you about syllables, you're not allowed to give about without the syllables, of course they are. You know, but for that early, that child who is having more difficulty, those earlier books are going to start. Okay? Great. So, over and over and What other questions have come along? Because I gave you very little on. Uh, I don't know if this is the handwriting question. Okay. Okay. So the question with the little struggling students where just simply keeping the letters at the right spot is such a hurdle to get over that they're just stuck. And I was wondering if there's additional manipulatives such as you know the puzzle piece letters or something a little more. Um, yes, there are others, but I don't think you'll get there faster with it. You may have just, you, you may, you're going to get there faster by spending one-on-one -on -one time with that child. This is where two on the clock is, and that child may take longer to get two on the clock and stay there than everybody else got it the first day. That one still needs to have to address again the next day and again the next day. Um, younger children, sometimes they do two on the clock and soap sets. Or they do it with um, whatever, cornmeal, okay, whatever. You all, um, well, many of you, not all of you, but many of you have uh, prior expense experience that you could break before that is going to work just fine. Again, though, the point I want to make is that just Keep in the forefront of your mind that you want to be sure that the time you're using to do that extra activity is valuable. You know, that you're teaching it as well as if you would, you know, as if you had copied it or something. It's a different way to do it. Kindergartners are going to stay in their chair, maybe just walking out. They, I wish you did, they would say the card and they went on to recess or whatever. You do math back. So, or to leave. What's this for? Okay, go. No. Uh, uh, another person addressed there, there are different ways that you practice uh, human spelling. Uh, one of your friends here was talking about two children with their bags together and they write on the whiteboard as you're addressing the word. It's going to take you longer to do that. If you write, they're both writing the word meaning, and then you turn around and discuss who. Who has the, the marking correct, or who has the rule, or maybe you only want to spell it that day. But th there's nothing wrong with that. And it's another way to get them out of their chair so that they're actually doing it. Just don't do it instead of what you know, you're the training you do. So you make sure that you've done that until, all right, I've got to come up with something else. I had a uh, second or third grade, watch, I didn't watch it, I was told about second or third grade class that uh, they had a game called Sparkle, you know the game Sparkle? Yeah. I had I wasn't familiar with it, so the concept is I understand I want to spell the word Sparkle. We would go around the room. It's kind of like a, um, a team um, <coughs> spelling game. So you have Sparkle. Okay. So instead of S-P-A-R-K-L-E, and whoever misses it is out. 
I would suggest that this person had to do s. The next one had to do. The next one had to do off. Hold up the number of fingers it takes. The next one has to do. K. The next one full, and the one who's last gets stuck with the job of telling what job it is. Okay. So if you're still reinforcing what you do, but you're adding a little bit of game to it. Okay. Um, I've seen phonogram, uh, bingo, I'm not uh, actually suggesting it. If you're doing it and it's only going to take about 10 minutes, great. But if you're spending 30 minutes on it, you've wasted a lot of time and you're doing something else. Okay? But there's nothing wrong with, it's just another way for you to get it. Just monitor your time and is there another way I could have done it differently. But I'm not saying that all day long these Second graders are sitting writing these same words over and over again, you know, for two hours, no, or even an hour. You know, maybe another way if you think, okay, they, they know those words really well, but the, nobody in my class can spell what. Okay? So we need to find another way to get that into what we're going to do tomorrow also. Okay? I will tell you something very interesting. Talking about the, about the word pocket. When, I, when you look at those assessment scores, um, that's this one has the word led. Um, he led the horse to the barn. And don't you dare teach that word before they take that test. But the, it's very interesting. At the beginning of the, the year, kindergarten, first grade, second grade does a pretty good job of this. And sometimes the later grade. But the later grades can have more trouble with that word because they have been given the information is more important than one way to spell it. So they spell it like three or the letter pencil. After the second graders have been given that information, by the end of the year you retest it. Now they don't know it. They knew it at the beginning of the year. So when you have that word in your list, and I'm in your school, I'm going to help you with a little money jingle or your fourth graders can't spell it. I'll help you with finding a way for them to get that in their head. Um, a different way to just, okay, this one looks like this. And this one. You know, the point is, at uh, one point, for, instead of jingle, the uh, fourth graders, I may say, okay, if this book is made of lead, do you think it's going to go my head? No. Because lead is very heavy. That's what lead is, right? So that it's heavier, it needs more letters. That's the lead, it needs more letters. It's a heavier material, right? In younger children, second grade, I might say, um, okay, you've all been really good at, uh, you've, done, you've done really well doing read, writing the word read. Show me on your fingers how to write read. Show me as teachers. R E D. Okay? Now, I read my book every day. Last week I read my book. Tell me the sound you write. R, A, D. We've done this word, we've learned this word, we know how to do it, right? So I read a book, I read a book, are they spelled the same? Yes, okay. Now, I lead the horse to the barn, or I lead the way to the, my friend's house. Tell me the sounds in lead. O, E, D. I lead the way. Past tense, I wouldn't say I lead it, her. I led the way. Tell me the sounds of led. O, A, watch out. A, D. Are they spelled the same? No. So I read a book, I read a book, they are spelled the same. Hold it up. I read a book, I read a book, they are spelled the same. I lead the way, I led the way, I got rid of that extra letter there for my vowel. I led the way, are not spelled the same. And if you do that often enough, in second grade, they walk into their class, their class on third grade, and they do a much better job than fifth graders do. Okay? But just that mnemonic device, this, oh yeah, that's the one I read about, that silly jingle that you do. But it's like, wait a minute, what was that? Okay? Because the reason they misspell it 
is because they had more knowledge and now they can read and learn to spell the same and so should they do that thing. And many adults don't get that. Yes. So that's something you would have on a chart, one of those charts you referred to? It's not a chart. It's your fingers. It's not on a chart. No. It's up with your fingers in the air. You don't need to spend it on a chart. There's years. not a list of those kind of work, though? Um, well, you'll get it in uh, approximately section L. Okay. okay. So at that time is when you would talk about it, right? And if you have um, 20 of your fourth graders that can spell lead, okay, you're not going to do section L, but you better teach it. Okay, so you can make them do the algebra. But you can also talk about heavier, make more love, talk about the difference in it. Did you make, if you go through that assessment in August and you find out that's one of the words that uh, 15 of your kids can't spell, well, don't, it's not like, well, I don't have to do that. No, it should do. You better go back and teach that word. You just don't have to go back and teach all such an L just because they miss that word. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So if we do pick out of the, or I do at least, you know, so occasionally I'll look at that list and say, okay, didn't remember this word, I will teach it. But I'm not teaching the test because they're going to be tested on that word again for a year. Right. It's not like it's next month's work. Okay. I'm going to I'm just going to take care of it. This is a problem. They need to know this. I don't want to just say, well, I'll, 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 I hope my next uh, grade level will pick it up. For me. Okay? But they didn't do it for me in the second grade. It was bad second grade teacher, so yeah. they take care of it. Okay. okay. Uh, anything else? Yes? I was just wondering, how do you feel about pencil grip for kindergartners or having? I never use one. I feel the same way about it as I would if I um, put braces on my child's leg when he didn't need it. I want him to learn. He's just not ready to walk yet. Okay? You will, you know, you are going to help him get there. Okay? But uh, I'm not going to put that crutch there. Instead, I'm going to keep monitoring it every day. And what you look, I know that it feels funny to you. Let's, let's just try it. I tried it, and it, it was all much better. There are some children that it's just never going to happen, but I don't, I don't want even, ever want you to think that. Because most of them, you keep talking about, show me, your, show me a circle. If you can do this, if you can't, for some reason, for something physically, you can have a child with juvenile arthritis. But you, if you're able to do this, and you're able to see a pencil has edges on it, you can put one, put one finger here, close it. There it is. That's your pencil grip right there. And there's your circle right there. Let me see just that much. Okay? And even if that's what you do with them every day, especially at K1, if that's what you do now, let it rest. Okay? And now they go back and they start writing it. It becomes something funny. And let's do it again. Hold these back together. You know? But you don't do it to the point of frustration for both of you that, if, well, if you're going to hold the pencil that way, you can't write a letter. Of course not. You know, we want them to, but we want to keep guiding them back to that. Okay? And that that extra grippy thing um, really makes it, you know, it pushes, it pushes your fingers in a different position. It pushes it off the size of the, left, of the pencil. That's why we all use the same pencil um, so that they're, so when that, they want to work at home and they can, oh my gosh, I forgot my pencil grip, what are they going to do? It's, that's the point. I would not um, rip it off and get whatever use you have in but um, I would try to stay away from it. You may have an OT in your, in, your, in your school that comes in and says, no, they definitely need that. I'm not going to have a big debate with that person. You're going to say, well, I don't have to agree, but okay. That's what you, everybody's resolved, then I would do it, but I, I would never suggest it. Me personally, I would not suggest it. Okay. Um, yes? So my, is my eraser is running out much faster than my leg. Um, are you okay with the ones that fit on the top, or would it be better if you have the solid one? I think it's better for the solid ones only because it does add weight to that pencil. It does distort how you're holding it. Um, 
And then, yeah, those blood those erasers, they, they will come in in the morning and search for the ones with the erasers because most of them are not in them. Because they're quite them. But uh, I, would, I would suggest that they have a, a separate one. But most of the time, they don't need to be erasing. You're practicing. Just cross it out and go to the next line. Or go inside it, whatever. You don't have to erase. Erasing is just adding time to your day. You know? You don't just put them on the Instead of erasing it, starting over, you know? It's just those extra seconds that you don't need and they're not learning English. Just cross it out, do it again. It's fine. We're going to frame this paper. I'm not going to send this paper home. This is our practice time. Just start again. Now they want to black it out. Don't move that either. Just one line in the direction we write, and now we're ready to go. Okay? Anybody else? Yes. Um, are you going to show us how to teach a whole lesson? Okay. I have done that. I've just done it all in pieces. And that's, um, thank you for asking. We had this conversation. Okay. The, the, um, when you walk in that first day, you have a lot of class management things you have to be taken care of. But what do you think might be one of the very first things that you talk about? Think back to day one. I know it seems like a month ago to all of us. But day one, what was the first thing that I talked about? Did I start writing words? Did I start marking? No. Did I start giving you a list? No. What's one of the first things you want to teach them? Yes. What did you say? Sit tall. Yeah. So I'm telling that. So I'm going to talk about, especially with younger children, the building blocks that make me sit tall. My spine and my back, I'm going to raise that back. And it's for your benefit, children, because now I can suddenly, I'm letting more oxygen go into my head. I can think better. Okay? And so I'm going to sit tall, back straight, hips back, feet flat. So all of that is taught. All the pencil grip is taught. The railroad tracks, where your paper's going to go. We did all of that before you, I ever let you write a stroke. Remember that? You didn't write anything. Okay? Even with fifth graders. There's a way that we're going to approach this writing. And just because we're studying math now doesn't mean we can you know, rest with your hand on your, um, on your arm and fall off your chair. <coughs> you still can have your body in a position of learning. Just be ready to go. So the things that we're learning that very first day, even in fifth grade, and we're going to be talking about it forever in kindergarten, you're going to get them ready for, for our learning position. It doesn't have to be scholarly. This is the way we're going to sit when we learn. Because now I'm, I'm thinking, oh, some more information is coming in. Instead of, which one is this one? Right? Okay. Um, so that's where every class throughout the school will start. Every year, that's where it will start. Because some of them in there haven't been there, uh, worked there last year. Fifth grade, we were talking about building blocks. I was thinking, it's back straight so you are in the upper position, just to the, the age of the child that you have. What will be the next thing to talk about? Who has an idea of where you're going to go now? Maybe you've got sitting out. Off letters. Off letters. Off letters. Whatever grade level you're on. Even next year, you're going to review it just mental for the remaining well this year. Okay? And you're going to go to the line letters. When the phonograms are in the order of pop letters. You have the the box. That's why they're in that order, because they're the clock letters. Those are the ones you're going to review first. Okay? Then you're going to go to the line letters. And then you're going to go to, depending on your level, you'll be going to capital letters. In kindergarten, you'll be going into the four phonograms. Um, you're going to be teaching numbers as soon as possible. Some of you are not making your numbers the way I showed you the first day. And I get it that it just worked fine for you until then, but now you're teaching younger children. And you need to show them how they're supposed to do it. If you want to do it your way, after school, I don't care. I mean, if, I, if you look at my notes, I'm the only one who probably read them. But, but I know they're notes to me. Okay? But if I'm writing something to you, I want to do something to you. Yes? I just have a question about um, teaching the, or teaching timeline for going from teaching like the third graders that are going to be coming in to the third graders. So we're teaching them, we teach them the main script, and then like, the next day cursive, where we go through. You are going to start with pencil hold and the whole thing.
first thing you'll do is manage the track. Okay. Yes. Even next year. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Even next year, you'll start with manuscripts. It's just that you'll go through it much faster to get them back in, in the person. But you want to, they want, I, I want them to still have their manuscript writing. I'm just going to ask them to be writing in connected person writing for you know, the rest of the year. It might take you a couple of weeks to get there. It might take you one week. Stay with your class level is, the, is what I would say to you. And a lot of it's going to depend, this year it's going to take longer to get there. Next year, you're going to have people coming in from second grade that you don't think you're going to be amazed how uh, much better, how much easier it is to teach them cursive next year because they've already been trained, they've already been given the information. Okay? This year, you're, they're full. A lot of them have never heard of it before. Right. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Um, is everybody comfortable with uh, using the uh, scholarly assessment and the, using the reading comprehension and have at least a working knowledge, even if you haven't spent much time in the teacher's guide, start becoming more comfortable with it. Let's look at the teacher's guide just uh, for a minute. See what what is it in here. If you go to this planning area, that's where your the yellow part of this book. That's where your scope and sequence is. That's that's to keep doing one. This is what you should teach this week. This is what you'll probably be teaching the first day next year. Um, and keep you in line that way. And I also talk that day, uh, it starts out day by day, telling you what to do and week by week. This is not the law, it's a guide. It's what it's called teacher's guide. Maybe just because it says week 10, maybe you're doing it in week 12, maybe you're doing it in week 4, uh, whatever it is, keep together with it. Um, there's, a net, there's a part in here called approximately, it's in the planning section, it's called spelling skills tricks. On page 30, it's a nice little addition they made that says, during lesson, it's like this. Uh, during lesson number one, these are some things that you would have accomplished, whether it's the photograph, at that point it's the photograph you're teaching, you're teaching these photograms, and you're doing these lessons, and it pulls it out. This is not absolute, but it's a guide to get you there. You guys are at that, right? Uh, and then what they have done, down where it says system, uh, systematic phonics, uh, high frequency vocabulary. We're talking about your, your errors list. We're talking about section 8, etc. And they're saying, let's see, is this one I'm going to talk about? All right, okay. In those, they're talking about the spelling rules and when they're taught. But there's another part of this that I said so we didn't spend much time on in the um, language part of it. And in that, um, it's the blue one, you'll see there a lot of the times when they say it's a language skill rather than what we've learned in the spelling lesson, they're talking about rules uh, 9, 10, and 11, for example. They're saying uh, that when we write hope without the sign finally because the end gives it about is a language lesson rather than a spelling lesson. Because many, in many uh, spelling foundation classes, they will ask you to just push those words in the book, and then later in our language lesson, we'll go more in depth in what happened in the word. Mrs. Spalding talked about it as the word was written. Let's get it while we're here. Okay, we can review it later, but I don't want to teach you hoping and writing without the E, and by the way, it's because the end gets with the vowel right in your book. I want to really know that you know what I'm talking about, okay, rather than just, here's the information, and in a couple of hours, we'll talk about it again. I, I have taught you to think about it, mark it as you're going, and actually, you know, if this rule applies, what is that rule talking about? That's the difference in uh, part of the system. We, uh, what I've been asking you to do. It's not that I'm going, we're going to all end up in the same place. We just got there a little bit differently. We took a little path along the way. And 
I think it's much, what I'm asking you to do, I feel goes more in the um, culture of great arts. We're, we're addressing it now. Let's, let's find out what we can discover about that uh, idea now. Why did that happen? Why in back was it okay to use that two letter? Because we know that rule, not okay, write it with the two letter, and then, you know, in language uh, this afternoon, we'll talk about what that rule is. Or talk about that rule, we were talk about it yesterday, so now today we're going to do it. I'm going to put it, I'm going to talk about it when I apply it. Okay, so that, some of the things that are in this um, writing skills trace, we may really consider as part of our, our spelling skills. But it still gives you kind of a guide, am I on track or not? Am I, am I way behind where I ought to be or am I, did I zip ahead of a bunch of stuff and now I forgot to teach all these things? Just as a little guide for you to know, to keep track of where you are. Okay? Um, in your, and then every day, I hope you look at this enough to know that there's your, your uh, information. Again, I want to call attention to, uh, I'm looking at this one, it talks about, uh, explains clarification, pronunciation, signs and markings, and our rules of these particular words. First one they have here is cabbage, rule 21, or sorry, rule 29, job 3, BCCE, syllable so we'll that's a reading technique as far as I'm concerned. I talked about that the other day. Is everybody comfortable with that? If I'm right, if I am reading the word, if I'm reading about uh, Wilbur, and he's in the cabbage patch, and somebody's stuck on that word, he can't figure it out. Then I would call to their attention, here's my vowel, here's my vowel. You see these two consonants? That looks like a really good place to divide my syllables. And that's about it. Now read your syllable, cab, the, they may say beige. What do you think that is? Cabbage. You've got it. I don't have to say, look what we have. We have a um, vowel, consonant, consonant, vowel pattern. I just found my vowel. This is where I divide my syllables. Or if I have the word, um, uh, in for a first grade. I haven't seen that word before. I don't know it. Okay, I want you to think about just those two letters as your syllable. Read that to me. They can read and. What do you expect them to say it? What word do you hear? Annie? They'll say in. If I have this word, kindergartners, call the word in the books. <clears throat> what do you expect it to say? A to be saved. It. Did you say he said it? Oh, they probably wrote it that way because it came from say. But I say I said it. That word is said. This didn't work out the way we wanted it to, did it? This isn't what we expect. But at least you don't have to go through and go through all of your um, writing assignment. You're just guiding them on the ones that they get stuck on. But you can still apply the, the information that they already know before they got there. If they're reading the word said, and they've never even seen that photogram, you have them in a book that's too difficult for them. It shouldn't have a book that says that. At that point, if you haven't talked about the two, look, two ways to spell A, but keep in mind, is this appropriate for what we've already analyzed in depth in our writing lesson, in our spelling lesson? That's where the analysis comes in, not as you're, you're teaching the reading. Okay, reading has its own set of problems. Comprehension, decoding, whatever. Okay? All right, anybody else? Okay. With, um, by the way, whoever gave this to me, whoever my secret admirer is, I really appreciate it. So the rest of you will have a half an hour of lunch to go take care of it. No, that was very nice, and they wouldn't tell me who did it. Um, that person was gone. I don't know. They didn't sit here now, but I do it this way. Just came right. Thank you. I don't know so much. <laughs> okay. Get comfortable with this delivery section. Make sure you read that again before school starts, because it says specifically when you talk about well, what if, what's the difference in the media feedback? What did it say? You know, how, what do I do? Do you give a written phonogram review? It has a whole script in it. 
I would even suggest that you have an open phone script at the beginning of the PR. You know what to do. You just you review, you, you know, think, oh yeah, make sure I cover those points. Okay? But that's all in here for you. Alright? Um, um, again, in that section when you were reading it, it has that whole B C C C I don't know. <laughs> I have I, when I took Foundation training, and I had to know them. I had my own little device of how I'm going to remember which one I'm supposed to do first, this is what I do second. And I haven't ever used it again. I have, you know, I, 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 want, I want you to know it. I want you as teachers to be aware of it and use it when you need it to help that child. But if you've done the job in the spelling lesson, it's going to happen uh, more infrequently than you thought. Okay. All right. Um, when you look in the assessing section, I think that we've taken care of that this morning. But one thing uh, next year, it, 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 it will tell you about how you're going to do your, um, how often you do your oral phonogram review, written phonogram reviews, which is every day, especially this year. And even next year, you're going to. Keep reviewing the phonograms. This is not something we do in um, just through September. We don't have to worry about phonograms again because they know them. Well, I'm sorry, they may have been perfect in October, but they are going to be a mess by April if that's the last time you ever do them. Okay? Um, you're going to have to, they have to still know they're going to be accountable for some phonograms on their test, or at least you're going to have the cards up that they're reading them. Uh, but something to keep that fresh. Just because the child knows the alphabet and then you go into multi-letter phonograms, don't assume he knows the alphabet forever. Because I can tell you right now, you ask him to write Ako U and you haven't done it for two months. Uh, some of you looked at that card and you did just that. Right? So he's not going to either, even though you had it. But they'll forget it unless you keep it fresh. Right? Um, so you, there, it talks about the assessments that you will give, but also a way to do it. Your, the week, the, um, there's an assessment tab in here before the spelling list is um, for the photographs, which um, is on a very first page of your assessing part of your book. And it says uh, oral photograph assessment, and that's what it is, it's an assessment. You will not use that this year. There's nothing to assess. They haven't told you out of time at the beginning of the year. You might want to pull this out in January and see if their drains or potties or Christmas tree somewhere. You know, they may, they may need to assess and say, boy, we really need to do those again. But you, your aide can take them out just like we did. You can't do it all assessment without listening to you individually because you're all too good at it. <laughs> Um, and that's, that's what you can use here. But certainly at the beginning of next year, you want to do it right away. What do they remember uh, from second grade that they were ready to tool with in third grade? They, they may all know the alphabet really well. So you don't have to spend all day doing the alphabet. You have to show them how to do it, move on. They're stuck on A E F. Okay? So you could, if that's the case, you've got a great group because you don't have to spend so much time teaching those photographs. You review it quickly, and now you're, you're moving on. Okay? That's going to be valuable to you at the beginning of year two, this assessment, to know, all right, I've got some weeks off. And then back in your um, evaluating. Again, if you have children who need extra help, that, that um, is the issue, how you're going to deal with that. Sometimes it can be two children at a time with an aide, you know, you're in the class sitting with that aide so that they can see it with the lady. When I say aide, I mean whoever's up here is the aide. The other person is the aide, the other person is the aide, the other is the aide. But both of you are working in the one. There, it works sometimes if you have a couple um, first graders who just can't get it, they, you may need to be at a table with them where they can still be part of what's happening in class, but, but you have 
uh, one of the teachers with them monitoring that that's, you know, that they're, yes, they're all starting to turn the clock over. Yes, we, are you um, helping the class save sounds when you know that child is back there looking out the window? And more typically, digging in his desk. That's a whole different problem. You know, they're back there having stuff all over their desk, the plate with the pencils and all this stuff instead of paying attention to what's happening up there. So that aid needs to be back there, guiding your hands back to the desk, you know, there is something for you to do. All right, that's pretty much um, what you need to be thinking about. Just get, get into that, that teacher's guide more than I was able to do, and obviously you still have to read. You should read all of the writing road to reading. I didn't assign all of it, just felt like it. <laughs> uh, first, review what I did assign. That's what you're going to need first. But find a way to get some of that other information. I could do it. That's why you want to use that. All right? It's just that that wasn't part of, of what we did together. You don't have to read every word in the nurse list, obviously. But you need to be sure you're reading your own, what you're going to be teaching right away, and be sure you understand what you're uh, going to be teaching that coming week. If I'm not there to ask, to talk to your other grade level people. I want to do a little bit of that um, because third, fourth, and fifth grade, we really didn't talk about the words that you're really going to be doing as your, as your first group. So take your blue notebook. Okay. 
and then uh, next year, your book will start on section R on that same page. Are you clear or no? No. Where does the one be? Okay, open your book to the where the sewing is. That's the mid to the middle of your book. All of these books, boys and girls, have been sewn together. And you're going to have to give a lecture on that because at least one or two in the school of the Hopefully, no more than that. We'll sit there and fiddle with that sewing until it's gone. And then the book flies apart and they, you know. Right. Which is another reason, how often do you check those notebooks, people? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, for the numbering, earlier in the book we had, you know, page two was the whole spread. Right. And it's, that's only for the page. Okay. These are, this is real page one with the, the consonants, vowels, mm -hmm. sound families. This is all real page two. Okay. It's different than the... Um, but in the back, these are the words you're doing. You can analyze them one by one. In the beginning, these are the rules. Okay. So this is all page two of the covers, all page three. So it is different. But they don't have to worry about that because you started back here on page one and two. When they're going to be confused, is when you take it back to the beginning and say, for this whole day, page two. I'm going to write the urge across it when you five five fold. By the way, do not fold that first sheet. So that when you open your book, this is a nice flat page. Okay? Don't let it fold it into three columns. That's why I said get a straight edge on page two. When you're doing it, you're going to put a line and another one. Do not paint these folds in your page and let them draw another dark line. Yeah, and don't you do it either. Um, that fold in the page should be enough evidence of where that thing's column will start. Okay? Um, so, we will all, at the beginning of the first word that we write, this year you'll be writing session A after that sewing, right? Okay. Next year it's O and Yes? Um, just to be clear, so the first. Uh, I guess eight pages are the first, are the roll pages. Are the roll pages. And then after we finish those roll pages, we don't use the pages. That's so right. That's right. Okay. That's right. You'll have, uh, we didn't do it, but I'll do it with you when I visit you. You will have, um, we've done page seven, which had all the fun friends, right? We also added something that I asked you to add. It's not in your, uh, textbook, we added page 9, which had all the capital letters, right? As you find a phonogram that you haven't taught before, those last uh, cards after number 70, as you find it in a word, I, I talked about it as I, I wrote that uh, uh, outline for you of when you teach those sharp letters or when you teach that, that's when you're going to come back here and teach those extra phonograms. So when you teach um, When you teach the word ghost, you would write your phonogram and then you would write your word. So that, because that's the first time you talked about that phonogram. It, it's not going to be now, I'm going to address that card, I'm showing sure the card, but it's not going to be part of my phonogram review. I needed it to write the word ghost. And the only time I'm ever going to need to begin is by writing gas and that's not going to be. Just not common enough to worry about. It. You need to explain, oh, look, we found a new phone. Okay? So it's not what we know, we'll make a note of it. We'll put on the page that shows all of them that we've done. Um, grade threes, page eight will not look like grade fours or fives because you're hitting the words at a different time. Okay? Just before you get it, before you do the word um, grade Jim, for instance, you would have to say, okay, we know that you can say Jeff followed by love letters, E, I, or what. In some words, it makes its own phonogram. In the region, we're going to put those two letters jet together. The G, I, or I, right on four. Which makes sense to me because I already know T, I, S, I, and C, I. They all start with syllables and shh. These two start with syllables and G. Okay? 
Jane will write the photograms, we'll write the word, now we'll write ready to write the evening in the book. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so that's what that page eight will be. All right, again, so you're back after, so yes? Okay, I have a question. When you end the section and you study the next one, um, do you just go to the next column or yes. the next page? Yes, okay. Next column. Immediately the next column, and you won't skip the line. Okay. You just go to the very next line, just like that. Yeah. Uh, you go directly to the, the next column. So, uh, first grade, you'll do A to G. What if you have six lines left? Next space. Look, we're going to do this with the very next We're going to start with the section. Okay? If this book is designed, I've gone through this entire book many times with many students on a one on one basis. And it's designed to be able to fit section, start at section B, A, with B to A go, and I can take them all the way to section C. If I, if I want to work the way it's supposed to be. None of you will ever have to do that. Okay? You'll be doing just your pieces, and that's what you'll do every year, and you'll be getting really good at my year three. Okay? Yes? So, on, I'm, I'm trying to visualize the day to day. To check the notebooks each day, we would be checking because we're adding a few more words in each day, and you'd just be checking those new words. You're only checking the new words. Yeah. So checking those new words. We're all, okay, when I say check the notebook every day, I mean check the notebook every day that you know words. Okay. You don't have them have anything in the book that is incorrect. And do you, are they usually collected or are they checked as you're walking around? I would you can manage that hierarchy. But a way that works well I've, that I've seen is leave your books on your desk. I'll see you after you're in the box. You just finish this. Keep your books open. And, okay? Now tomorrow, maybe that's your seat work every morning. Okay? Because you come back in and it's time for me. We're going to take the time to do it right now. But do you see I put check marks in many of your books? When you come in in the morning for bell work or whatever you call it, I, I said seat work. Um, but the bell's going to ring at 8 o'clock. You're probably going to be in your classroom at 10 till. You should be early. Okay? Don't show up at 8 o'clock. You're probably going to miss something. Be ready. You're ready to go. But that, that first 10 minutes thing you want to assign to clean up your notebooks because I'm going to check them again. Don't erase my check marks. I'm going to check them again. Okay? So then again, we would open before our class today. And I'll you were your eight or four. And the first few times, like, are, is she serious? I can't do this every day. This is a lot of work. I can't do that. But it won't take long until you're looking at it. You just taught those ten words. You know what to look for. You know they should be in syllables. You know they should have marks or rules. Okay? If they don't check mark, then they need to fix it. Okay? Don't go back and reteach it. Unless everybody in the class missed it, then you, you didn't make your point. Okay. With those check marks, do you, I know that if we made a, a little note so that way I knew what I needed to fix, do you usually just leave that as a check mark so the student has to try to figure well, it out? Well, in the beginning, the reason I gave you a little note is because you might not know what I did. Okay, so I might have to write a little note in the beginning. But if I gave, if I had that same check mark next week in your book, oh, I forgot to mark that word. Oh, I forgot to look up that word. You know what I mean. I don't need to make a bunch of notes here. Okay. Uh, and probably you'll have a line of people, people there and say, I don't know what's wrong with that. Well, maybe we have to take some time help, you know, have to judge. You know? Let me check, let me see if I can tell you what's wrong with your book, you tell me what's wrong with my book. A little bit of, you know, 10 minutes of chatter time. And when you're done, fix your book. Okay? Whatever it takes. Get those books. So until they're, they're used to, oh, I see. Okay. Do you erase the check mark once? You the teacher erases yeah, the check mark. Yeah, the teacher erases okay. So there should be no check marks. And don't use a red pencil, don't use ink, obviously. Okay, you damage the book for the rest of the year. Well, this is their work, and they're trying to do the best they can. All right, anybody else? All right, so we're in, back here we started this group, you and I. Uh, started in section K, so we're now back ready to look at um, C.
section R so we can help our fifth grade. There's just one question. Yeah. So, fifth grade, top of the page is page one, fifth grade is page two, top left. Correct. Okay. Page number one was here. And thank you for bringing that up. I have to understand that. Uh, page number two is over here, page number three is over here. In the corners. And they're little. They're not giant numbers. They're just a little number so that we can all talk together. If I ask you, class, I want you to all turn to page seven. Everybody should be on page seven. Okay? At the last column on page seven, we're going to read those words. Now, some of you didn't write them, or some of you may have gotten off track, right? So you can't, you're not with us now. You don't know what I mean. But if we'd all done it together, and we all stayed in the same place, we would all know that our first word is trust, we're going to read the spelling, for us, X, tra, dress, okay, etc. Uh, or D, or S, sorry. Um, to read these for spelling. But if we're all in different spots, it's going to take another 10 minutes to get No, you're supposed to be over here, and this is where we all are, and this is what it looks like. Keep them together in the beginning. That's why um, this whole thing about page 50 about, did you leave that space? Did you skip a space? You're not together now. You can't do it. Okay? Instead, what I actually want you to do is go back to, um, and I'm going to write on the board. I'm going to do it back. Okay. At the top of column 2, on page 23, as we have it filled in, I have two columns in my book. At the top of column 2, on page 23, on the top line, I want you to write a capital R in your best person. And you have a column R. Okay? Section R is what we're starting. Um, if, if you do, all right, let me back up. First graders, third graders, wherever you are. When you, if you're using a whiteboard to teach, you don't have a, a document, you have some way to show what your book would look like, or you can show if you don't have a projector of any sort. When you're starting, if um, we were really, we'd already added three words here. Here's, so you're going to have to say, here's my section R, here's line one, and here's line two, okay? We filled those in yesterday. Is everybody ready to write on line four? Demonstrate on the board where they are so everybody knows they're in the right place. Well, I wasn't here yesterday. Okay, well, this is where we are. This is where you need to be. And then one of us, my friend who teaches with me, or I will take you out separately to add those words to your book. Okay? Um, it becomes very quick. Quickly clear to most children and parents who are in an archway school, it's really not a good idea to miss. There's just way too much information in the world. Uh, I have a uh, grandchildren who have my daughter hates it more than anybody that child has to miss because she does value what, what she knows they're missing. And it's not about the paper that they have to read you, it's about I just don't want them to stay home because they, she appreciates the risk, the richness of what's there. It's not because of me, it's because of the teacher she's had, and she's already had somebody that's gone through third grade that she knows and there's so much about people. But if they have to, if they're deathly ill, or they're ready to temperature, they have to miss, this is where we're starting. Okay? My legs are way too far apart to be able to do that. But, point. You have to draw the lines and show me where they are. You have to say, okay, we got six lines down here, and now we're ready for this one, and the word about it should be whatever. So we're all in the same place. Okay? But now, we're going to do section R. 
And um, you're probably going to want to write those lines, but maybe not if you're another great teacher. I, I wouldn't insist that you, you write the lines. Certainly, you know, uh, lower grade, when you're trying to still really work hard on a lot of formation, you may need those lines. Yes? Is this something that we're going to be giving the children? Like homework as you gave us? No, they okay. will never take their notebooks home. They're, no. They're going to take home a list of the um, spelling words that you've created. These are those 10 words. They are never so going to go home and, and, and let their mom teach them the next 10 words. Okay. It's like okay. mine, when you said go back to page 7, I'm off. I didn't know how to do it. And so if I'm sending my kids home without understanding where no. they're supposed to no. skip spaces or... No. Okay. No. You're going to teach that at school. And if you have a child who's missed a week, they really should have those words in their notebook. It's going to be a lot tougher to try to grade them and you know, catch up that way. But um, it's not like they're just going to start where was they left off. Well, you, those spaces in, in my friend here and I was not get that and in your judgments, if you know how much time you spend actually reteaching that, and I wouldn't spend a lot of time on that. Darling, you need to be here. You, you miss a lot of that. And it's not fair to you for you to not have that information when you've gone on. Okay? Yes. Is that word list uh, a hand written word that costs you of all the words with the Notes and the markings on it, or is it just a tight up? That's up to you. That's up to you. I have seen both, but if, but if you think you're getting um, that it's easier to um, put it on your computer very quickly, you're going to see it's not so easy because now you have to get that that list and still manually underline and mark neatly. You can't do that with your computer and or do it well. Please. I haven't found a way. Um, but you have to write it in syllables, it has to be marked, you know. And don't, again, send home 30 words and say, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Because somebody's going to sit there and do all three lists, just copying them down, down the line. But you can, you can handwrite it and send that list, and um, paper becomes an issue. So you, as a teacher, may want to write three lists, photocopy the one list, and, and slice it up, and they just have a little list to take up. Or you may have somebody who, one of, one of your uh, team, said, I'll do the list for us every week. So they have, this is what Mondays looks like, and uh, Tuesdays, and, and everybody on that grade level, and we're doing the same ones. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So you, you're not giving it to them ahead of time. So, I want to, uh, let's write the words, write some words in section R. <coughs> the first word that I want to do, we're going to skip a line, but we're going to um, age. So they're not just going to write it. They're still all have their fingers up. They're all doing exactly what you've done. And you're going to continue to do that. Um, on most words, but not all words. But for now, you will. Put your books flat and everything off your desk except for your Alright, so we're going to skip one line. And students, we've already been trained on how to use your fingers. So it's nothing new. We're going to write the word loose. Now, instead of you being a student, you're the teachers, show me how your fingers will come. And somebody will tell you to have an E. What do is this? Loose is an adjective we talk about. 
It's describing something. It could be a loose tooth. It could be a, a loose chain. It could be a loose whatever you come up with. Okay? But it's an adjective describing something. I'm going to think of a loose tooth, though, because that gets me to the food book. Right? They think, okay, I already know how to spell this word. They probably will miss it in a month when you compare it with the next one. We're going to write loose and use foo book class. I'm going to pick it. That's all I have to do. I'm going to skip one line. So I know in my next, my second line, we're going to write the word loose. Help me write it. And see my, is all I'm going to start? Meant. And it's not up to her to decide what you meant. 
please make your two at the time you live. And if you don't want to do it outside of class, I'm fine with that. Just don't do it any other way to teach your class. Okay. Now, lose and loose, we're going to brace. So remember, some of you have forgotten this part too. Make sure you start the size of a short letter, straight, point, and back in. You shouldn't have, I made that too high because I wanted the size of my short letters. You shouldn't have to teach this initially at this point because you've already done page one and you've done a brace on page one. That's when you teach it. But you, if they don't do anything, you just have to, just like I never do it. So I say it again, you know, I really didn't need it. I really wanted the size of the short letter. Okay. On the next line, Actually, at this point, I'd probably skip, but you're smarter than that, so I'm going to tell you as a part. On the next line, we're going to write combination. There are a combination of things we need to do to learn correctly. Combination. Before I can do that, what would you have to tell me? Base word. What is my base word here? Combine. Combine. So I would probably, especially this first week, I would skip the line. Say, let's write combine before we attack combination. But I agree, my base word is combine. What are my syllables? Combine. And I probably wouldn't have them put it up on the page except for that child who said come. Com. Is everybody writing ha? Ha, o, u. Com. Bun. Let's write it. Skip one line. For syllable is what? Com. Bun. Help me out here. Uh, okay. And back to the beginning, what was the first sound? Uh, and, I, and I know that I'm in front of you, but I don't want you watching what I'm doing. I want you to be doing it. You're telling me what's right, right? So I'm okay with you being in front of it. Just so you disappear so that they can compare it. If somebody did write up or something else, they need to fix it. Don't leave it like that. Tell me your sounds. Ah, uh, mm, I, I just under the I, not under the J. Next sentence. Mm. Okay. Next each one. Now, yes. Okay. So the markings are they always in pencil or red? Or I'm not sure when. To oh, use. the only time you're going to use a red pencil in your notebook is on the first pages of your um, notebook, which you won't even do. Your first grader. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you won't. They don't need a red pencil except for they grading their uh, WPR down the road. At okay. first, you're going to go one by one with them. That's our only tactic. Okay. All right. But no, you will never use your, your red pencil marking your words in your in your uh, daily vocabulary. Okay. Only to call attention as we did on, on page one to all vowels, se um, second and third sound. Okay. Right. Look forward and then in some of them make the third sound. We call the attention to the side of the So only the theory you're teaching on your Okay, now. Um, fifth grade. You're going to have to come low the hopping, right? Before we get into combination. Before you can ever start this list. You're, I think I said, I hope I said that right. You're going to have to teach some of those notes pages. Because right now we already need a little bit of right? We already need, we already need to know what you're talking about when you say, what's my base word? We have, they've heard about base word before, but you haven't talked about what to do with this word, right? We have to address the word inside the meeting with uh, sections A to H, A through H. Now, none of them in there. So before you ever have taught this word, before you ever start that section, that's why you have that little cheat sheet. Okay? So now, you've done all that. So we're going to write combination. Now you're experts at it. Tell me what to do about combination. My base word is time. My ending is time. My ending is time. This agreement. Okay? So, if my base word is combined, you've heard all kinds of different endings here. If my ending is on, since we spent all the time on page uh, on the TIS, I see on. If the ending is on, then I'm going to have 
combine them. Right? If the ending is shine, I'm going to have combination. What you hear is the ending. It's back to what you hear. If my baser is combined, then I have combine. What's next? Combination. So what will I do? Pardon me? Right, and I hope you don't have to have a kindergarten come in and tell you. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, that's the way they're going to repeat it because you've, you've done those pages, but you won't load in all the pages like I did with you, so that they're all because of my own mess. It's just, but you do the ones you need in order to get into your list. And as fifth graders, you're going to need more than this third grade. That's why I gave you those clues about when do we do those number of pages. Does so that make more sense? Okay. Let's then do what she asked us to do, combination. But to do that, what's the first syllable? Okay, again, what's the first step, teachers, that we're going to attack as we're looking at words? So what's the first thing I want to think of? What's my first road sign? Base word. Where do I go next? Syllables. Okay? Then I start saying sounds. If you let them just write, pop and look at You've got to find, is there a base word? Now, my second step now after the base word again was what? Syllables. So help me find the syllables here before we write it. So we're all writing the same thing. Tell me your syllables. Com, Okay, I'm hearing different things here. I heard com, bin, a, shun, and I heard com, Bid, nay, shun. We're going to have to agree on this before we get started. Tell me again, what do you hear? We just said we're going to write combine without the silent final E. Let's make sure that's what we hear. Combination, what do you hear? Com, bid, nay, shun. Okay, I'm not sure everybody's convinced. We're going to write com, bid, nay, shun. I like to keep the base word together if I can. Why didn't I? Fifth grade teachers, why didn't I keep that? Mm, it, why is it a calm bin? Some of you still think it should be. Why am I saying no? We're going to write calm bin, nay, shun. Say the word to me. The word I'm going to write. What, what's the word again? Say it again. Combination. Combination. Do you know the combination to the say? Or do you know the combination? Nay. The end moved to the accent and syllable. Combination. That's why I separated it differently. It just keeps the face where I'm by itself because the entire stress of the word is now on nay. So it has more sense. Does that make sense? Okay. So feedback on what you as teachers no, you just have to take out the So tell me again the syllables. And your fifth grade students at that point are going to make that same mistake. They don't know. If you haven't done it, you can We've been back there doing that and this. And, you know, okay. All right, let's start combination of both. Tell me the syllables again. Help me. Okay, so now you're going to have to say all that work you did right 
face where it's about the side of the final lead. Every time that happens, that's really level. Okay? Pong, and here, if you're not teaching from your book, you'll see that in rule 11. Reminds you better you're not going to do that rule yourself as a teacher. Okay? So, calm, yeah, there was rule 11. A, mark, underline, what's the line say? Is that a rule? Four. Rule four. Do not write rules. Don't write RS. I saw that in somebody's book. Don't write rule again. All you need is a comma. We also have rule four. Okay. Okay. A. Next down. Shh. We're going to see this shh, boys and girls, again and again. Just start so we talk about it being the most common. Uh, I think that's rule fourteen.
I can hear Tom and Bob. Um, I happen to be from the Midwest, and I know there's also machines called combine. Okay? Which is another interesting point that I to address to. When I say combine, the combine in the field, what part of speech is it? Now, if I say I'll combine the numbers, what part of speech is it? There are many words in the English language that because you switch the accent and syllable, the um, part of speech changes. And many times it goes from noun to verb. Rebel. Yeah. Bad. Verb. Progress. Okay. Grass. Verb. Just switching that accent and syllable. Okay? I'm telling you that because it came up. I wouldn't tell you that just randomly. But you're going to be doing, uh, one of the first ones you'll do is progress of the dress. Uh, third graders will be doing that word. And I would talk about, you talk about parts of speech, and it's not something they need to actually repeat that, but it wouldn't make any sense to you if I said, I'm going to combine these letters. Or maybe if you're from the field too. You know, it might make perfect sense. But you're going to combine the letters. So what I hear makes that determination. So now I'm going to write combination. What I hear tells me that the moves. Not, oh, we have to look for that in six other different words. We deal with it as we find that word. In combination, I need to start somehow with a, a base word. What word gives me meaning? Combine. But I'm not writing combination. I'm, writing, I'm not saying combination. I'm saying combination. I deal with what I'm saying, the, the speech, the, the uh, oral part of it is what takes you to what you're going to write. That's where, where we all have to get to. You're used to looking at the word and trying to figure out what you're going to do with it. Get to what, what we say to explain why this is what we do with it. Okay? Yes? So what we worked out is just saying, where you, and then you brought up the difference between a combine and a combine something. Well, combine comes from a root, comes from a root. Home. So you really want to go there? Well, so when, you, when you deal with when you deal with this, this word has two different meanings, or would you just kind of not just kind of overlook it and just go with it? Okay, I glazed so over when you start telling me about comb. Is that what you said or comb? Comb. Oh. Comb. Yeah, okay. Comb. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. But that's not going to really help me so much to spell combine. It might help me spell comb later. You know. Oh, combine. For some reason, is you know, you're going to have to express it to me because I'm not sure that I'm going to buy it. Okay. But that explains where that B's on there, doesn't it? Yeah. Then I need that I'm information. Sure. Would you even address that the, this word has two, or like, like, like progress and progress? Uh, would, you, would you explain that this word. At this point? Yes. No, unless I had to because somebody said, I think you told me you're. Uh, your base word was a combine, or you're going to say the word you're writing now is combination. You're assuming where the accent and syllable is instead of listing where the accent and syllable is, right? I think it's on that first solo sign, there's a combination. I'm going to have a combination. I'm going to have a combination, right? So finding that accent and syllable, in this case, we didn't need to know the accent and syllable to spell it. Okay, so that double meaning. But it explains why we divided it. Does that make sense? It explains why that can be done. Yes. So if you were teaching the words and they already knew the words, would you start to spell it? Would you kind of mark the accent and syllable so they understood the difference? Generally, I don't. It's not horrible if you do. You know, if you ever know, you can pull that out as an expression of point. But if I write progress and progress, I don't have to do that because I'm going to write progress and progress. The, the division is different. But I'm not to. If I write excuse and excuse, because there are two on one and not the other, so I can read it. Yeah, don't pull out something that you don't need, but if it helps, the spell. Not just random information, but you know, somebody might say, is there another word, does that have something to do with phone? Does that have something, you know, is there another word to kill? Certainly, no, I don't want to talk about that. Of course, yes, you'll talk about it. 
But I, I probably wouldn't bring that up. This point is, it's not going to come, it's going to help me because I don't know what's going on. I can hear the buzz. No, 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 but just because I expect I am going to say it, even if you have so far. If I am going to say it, or, or, no, no, it's not sort of a rule. It's rule five says, we are rather rule five. Yes, we do. If the I says I at the end of the syllable, rather than writing rule four, we write rule five. If it says yeah, we don't write anything, because that's what I expect. Yeah. If, just as I did in baby, I wouldn't put anything over that line, okay? If the Y didn't say on, okay, I would have to write row six because I didn't use an I at the end of the And then for organization purposes, like throughout the whole book, why do we write combined with any composition? Why do we skip a line like set, say? Okay, and then this one right here? Okay, because the only purpose of that is that the word that I want to teach is combination. The first word in the bracket in your book is the word that you're trying to teach that way. To get there, it's easier to start with combine. As they're more um, trained, you might say, let's write combination down like the base word. But certainly in the beginning, I'm going to help them write the base word. Now let's go back and build the new word. Okay? But that first word, the first word in this Ayer's list was lose the next word was combination. That's the only thing. And I don't have a problem with keeping that list consistent, but I need to every time value what what's the easier one to teach. That's why I taught lose first. Not because of any other reason, but I had a clue for that one. It's, a, it's that double O. So I'm going to teach that one before I teach lose. That's the only reason. Okay. In combination, I want them to be sure that they understand that the base was combined. So I'm going to start there. Okay. Could have just as easily been combined on top. That was the easiest. I teach it first. And then go. Don't assume you're going to always get to the second line if there are two words in a phrase. Use your um, accounts to figure that out. It's going to be strong and that's the part of teaching. Let your audience know what you're going to do first. All right. On the next line, then, we're going to write avenue. He, uh, let's use a different, different avenue to get this point across. He lives on <coughs> avenue. We're going to capitalize it, though, so we'll try to avoid that first. We'll pick another avenue to get there, a toll bar, like a, a street, right? Tell me the syllables in avenue. For syllables? <laughs> Eh, I have to tell you, eh, fifth graders can, can abbreviate that word. They know there's an E, probably, but that's why it's there, because it's the only word to write. Eh, eh, is what I'm going to write. Mm, you, can I leave it? No. And I would probably do that at this point with those fifth graders, because this is one of the first words they're writing that's more than a first grade word. All right? Show me again. Ad, ad, we all know it's at e, you can't be at the end, right? All right, help me write it. Already done it. 
to be careful. You must obviously give it a, a sentence. And the other, pick out the sounds of it. I don't think you would have done there and there. I think those are in section L. You would have only gone through section H. You haven't talked about this before. Okay? So when you write where, I will wear that costume, what's the first sound that I hear? Hold up your fingers and show me what. Let's see if we're all in agreement because somebody's going to do this. Before you go to the next line, this, it's only one letter, right? Before you, go, or before you go to the next sound, make sure everybody has the fingers up, okay? The people who do not are probably going to be the ones who will spell it, because they're not paying attention. What? And now I can feel it. I know what she's talking about. What's the next sound in where? What do you hear? Air. They're, all, they're probably going to say air. But I don't know if one of them here. I need for you to write A, and we're going to use E and A, and you can ask somebody if they know what you're going to use, depending on where your class is. But you're going to have to help them get to A. We need E and A this time. Next sound is R. Let's do it again together. R. A. R. Everybody convinced A? Everybody know E and A? Okay, let's write where. I will wear it next week. And these I would not erase. I would keep 10 words on the board. I'm just writing huge. You don't have to write anything because I don't know. Um, you'll want to keep them in your list so they see all of them, not to erase as you go. Let me write where again, please. One more. A. A. First sound, whoa. A. One, three. Good. Okay. E. F. A. Somebody may say two. Somebody may say three. Whoever says anything, refer to me. What's the fun of that? E, F, A, unless I'm three seconds. Okay, A, and then four. Okay? All right. On the next line. Question? Yes. So we say A for that time and then we say where. I don't really, what if you wear? Where? Do you know if I've got hair? So you're going to have to break up air and find out what's really in there. That's why I believe it's A, or A, that's why I have to put it in there. Okay? Just to write air, what is that? I don't know. It's A, er, somewhere in there, right? It's again that er that's the problem. If I say where, it sure sounds a lot like it, but it's really at er. You have to get them to the right vowel sound next to that Okay, are we okay with that one? All right, so on the next line. Oh, just another question. Mm -hmm. So. He's really nervous. These are his first 10 words. So. So. Break the sound. We would say break down by the syllable. We would say break down by the sound. We would say break down by the sound. We would go by the ponder. Right? Okay, just to be sure. Got it. Um, uh, yeah, okay. So now it's not something, well, that was fun, let's do something else now. Because we're just building on it. We're doing harder stuff now, that's all. Okay? Great. Uh, anybody else? Okay. And again, remember, when I have um, second grade classrooms who, if they were doing this work, they would say, lose, lose. They're showing this little right there. Base word, lose. And now we're ready to do it on my hands. Combination. Base word, combine. Indication. Okay? So what do I do? I can copy as many things as you have. Syllables, com. You hold your fist up and they, they got them up there going com, fit, name, shun. Alright? So that you can't do that immediately, but that's where you're trying to move. So you, you don't have to say, what is my base word? What are my syllables? Like I'm having to do with you right now. So you're, you're ready to go, okay, um, immediately in syllables. And if you only ask them the base word for combination, and you never ask it for um, lose, 
They know there's, they, you've already told them there's no base word. So you can, it, what's my base word here? It's still lose. Okay? Just because it doesn't have a base word doesn't mean you have to don't think about it anymore. Because your teacher said you've got to think about it now. You need to think about it all the time. And those base words are only, again, those little road signs to help us get to where we're going. I'm just trying to make your life easier. Seems like it makes it harder if you have to know more stuff. But that stuff that we're pushing in your head is to help you get there faster. Right now it's a slower process, but it's going to get there sooner, sooner. Okay? All right. So, on the next line, I want to write um, entertain, base word. What is it? Enter. How to, tell me, give me a sentence with enter. I will enter the classroom. Okay. So we're talking about walking into the classroom. Does that help me with the meaning for entertain? I don't think so either. So I don't think the ending is pain. I don't think just, we're not looking for words within words. We're thinking meaning, and does that meaning help me to spell? Okay? Um, I don't think the base word for understand is under. I don't think that's a compound word. Even though I've been told it is, and I debated and I said yes, ma'am, and shut up. I just don't agree because how does stand help me spell, help me understand that word? I think it's a three-syllable word, and it happens to have some words in it that I know, but it's not giving me meaning to get to the meaning. Okay? So is there a word? Is it what base word do you think of for entertain? What's my base word? Entertain. That's it. There's no word. You know, it's, it's not, even though I see enter, even though I hear enter, it doesn't help me with meaning. So I don't think it's a good one. Okay, so now what? Yeah, so, you're, so now I'm going like this, so you have your hands up and you tell me what they are. Enter. Now, fifth graders, at this point, I don't have to say that, or even at this point, you've done section A to H. But I do have to say, enter. Tell me the sounds in tame. First sound. Next sound. A. A. It takes two letters, and then <laughs> now they know what you're talking about. But you can't just assume that they know tame. It would work just as nicely to have A consonant E. And somebody may say, well, I don't like that. Why isn't it A consonant E? Let me tell you, fifth graders, but the first graders need to know two. This is not a stone rule. This is a pattern, again, that's happened over and over. And when you're in section J, it's kind of scary that I know which word <laughs> section J is on. But you'll be doing the word train. When you teach the word train, first graders, second graders, and third graders in the show, you'll teach train for a, I need for you to use the two-letter A here, and I need for you to realize, I'm going to give you a little clue about this word, a little trick to remember. When you hear A, and the next sound at the end of the word is N, this just keeps on happening, over and over again. Main, brain, chain, words they can read, okay, even in second grade, right, okay, but we also use it in explain. Entertain, okay? Um, fifth graders, we use it in mountain. Am I over here? Mountain for mountain. Captain for captain, fourth graders. Okay? Curtain for curtain. It's not the accident syllable, so it's not as clear. All right? Does that mean the only time I use the two letter A is if it's followed by an N at the end of the word? No. But if I do hear the I said, oh yeah, there's that two letter A. And probably, after I've taught that three times, I will say, I've told you again and again and again, even though we say it again. Two letter A followed by Okay? 